It's time for Twit. You might be wondering why my head keeps coming off. I'm just really excited about our panel this week on Twit. Horace Deddy, who I admire immensely from A. Simcoe, is here. Perhaps one of the most astute commentators on what's going on in the tech world. He'll join John C. Dvorak and me. Oh, and another smart guy, Mark Millian. It's going to be fun. Stay tuned. Twit is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new WinApp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech. Episode 395, recorded March 3rd, 2013. It's not blue, it's bluish. This Week in Tech is brought to you by ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Visit ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter Twit. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, and now an online store. Check out their new commerce solution so you can start selling stuff immediately. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIT3. And by GoToAssist from Citrix. Take control of your IT world from one simple cloud-based platform. Provide live or unattended support to all your users from anywhere. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com and use the promo code TWIT. And by audible.com sign up for the platinum plan and get two free books go to audible.com slash twit2 and follow audible on twitter user id audible underscore com it's time for twit this week in tech the show that covers the week's tech news and boy i'm excited about this panel today um starting with john c dvorak to my right of uh, ChannelDvorak.com. He's got, this is your new, this pistol thing. Is that your new? Yeah. You know, like, a kid got kicked out of kindergarten for, for doing, doing that. that I yeah. know. Isn't that sad? It's pathetic. The actually. terrorists won. You know that. Oh, yeah. Well, they won. Yeah, they did. There's a guy, uh, he's a travel blogger, got uh, kicked off United Airlines because he took a picture of his seat. What? He took a picture of I've his seat. I've taken pictures in the plane the, all the time. The flight attendant took umbrage. He said, what do you Was mean? You sure I'm not she, well, he wasn't taking a picture of her seat. As no, it he were. thought she thought no? maybe he was taking a picture of her. Anyway, she took umbrage. He said, I'm not a terrorist. They threw him off the flight. Well, you don't say I'm not a terrorist. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. The terrorist one. Because if you can't, I mean, if we live in such a paranoid world that he, that normal common sense is shot. Yeah, yeah. Then they won. That's yeah. what they're trying to, that's what terrorism is about. They're laughing, they're laughing in the hut caves they live in. <laughs> Mark, oh, Jesus. Mark Millian is also here. Bloomberg Business Week. Nice to have you back, Mark. Good to Great be to here. Great to see you. Good to see you. Your, uh, your T-shirt says Frightened Rabbit. Frightened Rabbit, yeah. Is that a band? Uh, yeah, a good rock band. They're coming right. here in a couple weeks. All right. I thought it was a statement about your emotional state or something. No, I'm, uh, okay. I feel good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and I'm really pleased to welcome, well, I'm, I was pleased to welcome both of you. I don't want to I don't want to imply that I'm not thrilled to have you guys, but we've never had Horace Deddy on before, and I'm very excited about having him on. We talk about his uh, Simcoe blog all the time. Uh, he's a great analyst of what's going on, particularly Apple. Horace, welcome to Twit. It's good to have you. Well, thank you very much. I'm yeah. very, very happy to be here and thankful of the opportunity. We were talking about the show. You were an analyst at uh, Nokia for eight years mm -hmm. and uh, have taken to the blog world to do something something similar. Do you, own, you write a lot about Apple, but it's not just Apple, right? Oh, no, not at all. In fact, uh, Apple is only a, a sort of a metaphor, actually. I think it's a, it, what I'd like to really focus on is innovation. And uh, you know, I, I'm... I'm I went to business school. Uh, I studied under Christensen, Clay Christensen, the author of The Innovator's Dilemma and uh, several books thereafter. And, you know, that really inspired me to think about what, what does it mean to really change the world? Because technology is, uh, is one thing, uh, but really making it into a commercial success is what changes the world. And, uh, and so for me, the whole question in my mind has been ever since about 2000, uh, what does it, what, how do companies succeed at being uh, serial innovators? Not just once, not just twice, but 
repeating the, the process over and over again. And in that sense, there, was, there were very few examples of that happening. We've seen it only with uh, Sony, perhaps uh, back in the 70s and 80s. We've seen it with maybe IBM back in the 50s and 60s. But today, the only real company that's been uh, able to do this more than a couple of times has been Apple. And so really, I like to take it apart, figure out what makes it tick. And then actually, hopefully others can, can uh, be more like Apple. Um, I, I, I recently wrote a, a story saying, uh, why is it that people like to copy Apple's products but don't want to copy the company itself, uh, the product making engine? Um, sometimes I call it, you know, it's like making a blockbuster manufacturing uh, factory, you know, why don't you want to own that factory? Um, few people actually do, and that's a mystery to me. And, and so explaining the process of innovation, what it takes to manage innovation, uh, Apple is a great way to do so. And that's why I focus a lot on it. If they were to lose their way, certainly I think we could move on and, and talk about other companies as well. And there are many times when I do actually uh, dive deep into some other companies. I've done Samsung before, I've done Google analyzing Google's um, Android business, for example. Um, I've looked, of course, at Nokia for many years. I've looked at uh, Microsoft as well. And I sometimes even do a comparison of all of the above on one, on one sort of massive in-depth chart, trying to understand w what makes uh, them similar and what makes them different. It does raise the question, why, if Apple is a roadmap, a game plan for innovation and su success of innovation. Why more people don't copy him? Did Samsung copy Apple? It seems like well, it's, the courts it's, thought they did. <laughs> well, the, the product copying is one thing. I mean, certainly Apple does its share of that as well. And I think that's common been commonplace uh, for in the industry, actually, for many decades that you build on on, right. on sort of the building blocks that had came before. Um, but uh, the, the question really is about the business practices of Apple. So how do they make products? Um, and another way, let me take Apple off the table for a minute and talk about another company that actually has a repeatable process. And that is actually Pixar. Pixar figured out how to make blockbusters. And not just one or two, but no, every one movie's after the other. Yep. Yeah. And yep. it, it, there are limits to how that happens. For example, they can't make one every year. They can't make three every year. They have to make them after a couple of years and it takes a lot of time and they can't scale that process so you can't turn pixar into a thousand movies a year type of business each one being a blockbuster and they know their limits they know they can only make one every couple of years because the number of people needed the time needed the incubation period and the refinement the polishing all that work it takes to make one of these massive massive successes from pixar um is 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 essentially embodied in that in that business model and that's what they were purchased by disney for now the question is can you scale that innovation process to the technology space is that what what apple is doing um how do you take it into into um, other industries even beyond technology you know consumer products or 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 what have you that's really the mystery out there and i'm, I'm trying to figure it out it's i'm not sh sure i have it yet but it's a, actually really, at. it's a really apt question. It's one thing to copy the the product, but that's not the that's not the chain. Yeah, in fact, Tim, uh, Tim Cook was just asked this at the uh, conference. Uh, was it two weeks ago with uh, the uh, Goldman Sachs conference? Right. You know, what makes Apple innovative? And he went on about the team he has and the fact that they're integrated and they know how to do software and hardware and the, and services as well. Um, and that's certainly part of the part of the story that they have integration and they have great staff. But the, the question again comes up: Why doesn't anybody else do that? Why right. doesn't anybody become integrated? Why, why doesn't anybody hire the same team? In fact, you could probably poach them if you wanted to, and you had enough money. The, the answer is that it's actually probably more to this magic, more to the special sauce, than we 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 are led to believe. One of the clues out there actually is that you have an internal. Uh, internal division or, or, or something called Ab Apple University. The, don't conf you know confuse that with uh, with the iTunes U, iTunes University. This is Apple University. It's a, it's an internal training or MBA program, if you will, for their own employees, their own management to learn how to be an Apple manager. And the question of how do you teach that and what is the curriculum? Uh, they brought in some pretty high powered people from business schools like Yale and Berkeley to run it. In fact, the head of Yale's business school took over uh, that division and became the head of HR at Apple. Imagine the head of HR at Apple 
is the, a top academic from uh, from Yale. Not not something you would see in any other. No, company. he's obviously not prosecuting sexual harassment cases. He's doing something else. <laughs> There was That's an interesting. There's a, was an interesting uh, uh, point counterpoint between John Gruber uh, Friday and uh, Tim Wu at the New Yorker. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim wrote an interesting article that says uh, that o open beats closed all the time, and that Apple, which is kind of the notorious counterexample, is a closed system. Uh, he wrote a, a, a column saying Apple needs somebody like Steve Jobs, and that Apple without Jobs is falling back. Uh, uh, to Earth. Well, does anybody seriously think that uh, Pixar would be anything without John Lasseter? Well, that's the and question. Just, isn't and it just the, cloning isn't it Pixar. In fact, if you clone Pixar and took Lasseter out, which is kind of what you're suggesting, I really doubt if it would be successful. Well, that, that that's the crucial question, and I want to put put this to you this way: um, there's a lot of there's a lot of success stories and failures, not just in business, but in all kinds of human conditions, human enterprises, whether it's wars government, um, you name it. I mean, who won, who, who was responsible for the success of the U.S. Army in, in, in Europe? Some would say it was patent. Some would say there was the system of the U.S. Army, or some would say that there was a process at work. There's always a combination of great people and the, and the process, and you cannot say that it's only the individual that's responsible. That's not giving credit at all to all the other individuals involved. There's also not giving any credit to the fact that there's some magic involved in the way the thing is put together. It's like it's like telling people, why, is, why do you have a great piece of software? It's like, well, because I have great input, because I have great algorithms, and because I have a great way of putting it all together and making a design. So that's the thing about business business is that some there's too much emphasis I think on the sort of magician in charge but not as much on understanding the process that that is working behind the scenes that doesn't get a lot of credit I'm not saying however that process is everything and that if you took the the, the great leadership out it would still work that's not true either but you have to pay attention to process you have to pay attention to the to the to the organizational structures that they put in place I call these actually Christians initially call these the, the resources, the processes, and the priorities of a company. Resources are things which walk out the door every day. Processes are things that take de years and sometimes decades to put together. And priorities is why you do certain things. Priorities, for example, are very, very hard to change, almost never change in the company. Uh, that's the business model. That's the entire, the entire, what they call the DNA. And so I don't focus so much on the DNA, but I do try to understand the processes involved. And it's it's interesting that processes that are tuned to innovation are actually quite rare. Most processes companies use are trying to actually maintain what they already have, not to create something new or to destroy what they have to, in order to replace it. So I, I to, to step back a little bit. Uh, to this debate about open and closed, what I what I found find interesting is the analogy of open closed is very similar to another analogy of integrated and modular. Integrated is very analogous to being so-called closed, and a company like Ford, which which made the Model T in the 1920s, was using essentially an integrated approach, and in that they would really own the entire value chain. It wasn't open in the sense they would allow its suppliers to give them certain pieces, and then they would provide a standard interface for for things like like parts and engines and so on. Rather, they chose to design everything themselves. Now, what happened is. Later on, General Motors had a completely different approach, and they were much more successful because they didn't have, they they wouldn't create just a single model, but they were able to create a huge multitude of models, and they were able to do so very rapidly, and they could make a new a new car every year, which was unheard of before then, and they had a flexible manufacturing model to allow this to happen. So what we saw happen in the auto industry already by the 1930s is that a switch from so-called integrated to more modular was the way to go. So as the industry matured, it flipped from being integrated to being modular. And this happens over and over again. But when you come up with something new, something completely different that the market has never seen before, you've got to go about it in an integrated way. This is why when we first saw computers, they were integrated, they became modular. When the computers then became smaller, they started out integrated and then became modular. When the web came, it started out being integrated in a sense that you had to have, you know, the same company building the browsing and the same company building the operating system like we saw with Microsoft. And then Google came and Firefox came and so on. 
So we're seeing this process over and over again. So you can't say that open always wins. Open wins in the end of the late st stages of an industry once it has reached a maturity where, where modularity actually works. And, and that solves a different problem for the user than just working. It has to work in a much more expansive way, like it has to work as a uh, convenience rather than just utility. But look you at know, how wait, I want to say he's got a great future ahead of him as a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard all this yeah, kind this of thing before, and this is a beauty. Well, but that's what management wants to hear is it's not the person, it's the process, that there's DNA you can communicate. Uh, uh, we're going to see the results of that great experiment at Apple because uh, the person's gone. The we process saw it and DNA already exist. once when... Uh, Steve Jobs left the first time. Spindler actually m multiplied the income by 10. Really? Not Spindler, I mean uh, Scully. Yeah. And then when Scully left because he couldn't keep this pace up, this torrid pace, and everyone said, well, we should be going even bigger. Right. They started bringing in the, the third generation and fourth generation, Spindler and then the guy Emilio from and Emilio. And the thing started caving, and that's what, how it ended up, process or no process. It doesn't hold up unless you have talent at the top. I... I I think it's great the idea of having a machine, but it's still people more than anything. And that's what all the investors do. There's not a VC in the world that would invest in a process. They invest in the, in the founders, don't they? Yeah. It seems like the product generations are even shortening to maturity now at this point where, you know, Apple was able to control personal computers with the Mac for, you know, it seemed maybe like eight years when, when the first uh, Macintosh came out. Um, following the Apple II. And now, you know, we're five, six years into the modern touchscreen smartphone and, and Samsung is clearly the dominant force. It's not Apple. So Apple's new innovator dilemma seems to be, you know, they have to create a new a product watch. category. Yeah, a it's watch. It's all about the watch now, right? Well, Sam, one thing, by the way, just to note, Apple was not the leader in the smartphone space except for one or two quarters in its whole history. Um, it was Nokia that was the leader for many, many years. Um, John was a big US. E71 fan. You were a Nokia fan yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And, yeah. BlackBerry was big in the United States, so really Apple never was number one, except I think the only category they've ever been number one is MP3 players. So it, 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 <laughs> That's really it, funny when you think about that. It's true, though. I, I mean, they're maybe number one in terms of profit and, and somewhat in sales, but that, that, that is also potentially transient. The, the thing to note is that this is not the game they play, the volume game. So it's, it's, uh, it's unusual, in fact, that they get to this kind of number that they have today. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's, the crucial, that's the crucial dilemma. And when you are integrated, typically you cannot serve billions of people. It's just very, very hard to scale. Um. Let's take a break, because there's more to talk about. Horace Tedios, just it's so great to have you. Thank you from asemco.com. Mark Millian, Bloomberg Business Week. John C. Dvorak, Channel Dvorak. Noagendashow.com. By the oh. way, I have discs for anyone who wants the best of January show. You're giving out discs? Or yeah. will you be selling them as people no, no, in no. the No, no, no. They get free discs. Get, no? All right. Somebody sent them to us. And <laughs> you so know, we, we should do that. We should have a little table, a little yeah. card table out in the lobby. You could sell That'd discs be perfect. Yeah. I can sell a... Uh, yeah, give. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, if anybody John will be passing those out. He's a big fan of a No Agenda show. No, he's just going to leave them in a stack. Boy, there's a rush. Don't all. Don't all get them at once. Rush over. We're uh, dropping most of them off in the Korea. Uh, you know, in Korea. No Agenda show is huge in Korea. No, no, no. With, like the little parachutes? No, have you been to uh, the Hankook uh, a supermarket down in Sunnyvale? It's a Korean place. It's fantastic. Yeah, if you've yeah. never been there, you should go. We should go. We're going to be down there tomorrow. You should check it out. It's huge. Well, they don't ha they have, you know, where you get the free newspapers on the free stuff and there's little bins and stuff. In the, the Koreans, I guess, don't do any of that. They just hand out discs. Oh, there's wow. There's stacks of all kinds of discs. Like uh, AOL. Yeah, it's like, yeah exactly. AOL. <laughs> this is what we've got to buy, buy AOL discs. Right hours. <laughs> yes. So, John and I actually are going down to San Jose. We're going to be speaking at the uh, Radio Inc. Convergence Conference. This is going to be really interesting. We're going in front of a lot of radio executives to tell them why their business is doomed. Why they're doomed. Yeah. And we have so much respect for Maybe radio you can bring executives. Some of those discs. Uh, and I, I, those I, I will. I'm going to bring a the pile. future. No agenda show. And I, actually, I will throw them into the audience. Yeah. Maybe I can. You might. Maybe that'll slow them down as they attack us. Yeah, it could be. Uh, They're giving us all of 35 minutes to do a keynote. Two of us. Yeah. So we're we'll good. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, we're going to ad lib the whole. We thing. were originally uh, scheduled to be the keynote at uh, the beginning of the conference, and I noticed 
Yeah, they bumped us they, with somebody else. They they moved us down the uh, the list. I think they figured out finally that you know these guys really are trying to kill radio, and <laughs> and now Tim Draper of uh, Draper Jervis and Fitcher. Yeah, and and Draper knows nothing. Rhinoceros. By the way, I know Draper. Yeah, he knows nothing about new media or radio. But he's but, a visionary and venture capitalist behind many of the top brands you know today. And then we got these Statler and Waldorf of tech, <laughs> Dvorak and Laporte to talk after that. What time does his think? Do we? Is oh, it, I'm sure he's at one. We should go see him. Yeah, and then we can blast it. <laughs> and he won't have any retort. He'll, he'll leave. Draper's very entertaining on he'll stage. Be, no, Draper's he'll okay. I've heard him speak before, no, but be he'll leave right afterwards immediately. Yeah, because he doesn't. But, yeah. So then we can say whatever he does we want. his uh, his little song on stage. Have you seen he, him speak on stage where he does a song? No, I have not seen the song. Pretty much every keynote that he does. Oh, I wonder when he started that. We should get a he, little song. No, I'm not going to do a song. Together. We do a lip sync something. Okay, all right. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take a break. If you missed, uh, we had we had a good week on Twitter, don't you think, Chad? This was a particularly unusually good week. Yeah. Uh, no idea. This was <laughs> this this week. We we did lots of things. Let's take a look. Maybe there's something you missed, and then right after that, we'll find out with Tom. Or coming we up could in the week ahead. we could keep talking about how good. Oh, you're not ready yet. This are you? week has okay, been. Why don't you rewind the tape? It has been a really good. But he week. was live. Um, Tom Merritt. No, we're talking about the promo. Tom's live, of course. Yeah. No, the, this promo. Oh, wait. Darn it. What do you think of the house ad, John? <laughs> I never put the house ad in this early. I thought I'd give it some... some no, you see, know, you're jinx. It's cursed. It's cursed. I knew it. It's my fault. I was distracted. Here we go. Okay, so this week, uh, real exciting stuff, everyone. Take a look. Previously on Twit triangulation to get elected you need a lot of money and the best way to get a lot of money is to ask rich people for it right. and the best way to get them to continue That's giving good. you money is to pass laws that make them richer and they get to use that money to get you reelected. lather rinse repeat and three or four election cycles later it's a felony to find out whether or not your phone is spying on you matt break weekly from that bastion of journalistic verisimilitude the new york <laughs> post comes this exclusive NYPD forms dedicated team to catch thieves who steal iPhones and iPads. Before you buy. I took some video of my dog, Tibbs, running around in the grass. And I also did some low light inside shots. And this camera performed really well. All about Android. The fact that you have in your in your marketing, you need to name something truly unlimited, know, right? just speaks like, to the just... fact that you're lying. No. Like, you're lying. <laughs> and like, now we know. Twit. Now... Where'd I put my Android? Hey, thanks, Leo. Here's a look at some of the things happening in the week ahead. We'll keep an eye on for news on Tech News Today. Uh, starting Monday, March 4th, the <laughs> Festival hey, is happening in San Francisco. <laughs> also, that live. same day kicks off the Freedom to I Connect conference in Silver Springs, Maryland. Live. Tuesday, March 5th, begins CBIT in Hanover, Germany. Friday, March 8th, South by Southwest Interactive yeah. kicks off in Austin, yeah. Texas. And Saturday, March 9th, we the Boston Code Camp, Camp 19 okay. happens at the New England Research and Development, or NERD, yeah, campus of Microsoft. That's a look at the week ahead. Back to you, Leo. Thank you, Tom Merritt. I don't ever run that at the beginning of the show, and I just thought for a change, we should give them a chance at the beginning of the show before everybody's tuned out. What? This, this is the kind of thing that makes them tune out. <laughs> oh, Darn, I didn't think of that. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by ShareFile.com. This is a great solution I have really been using the heck out of. And no matter what your business, you probably will want to, too. As you know, in business, effective communication is everything. Unfortunately, these days, sending uh, email with attachments is not done. You get the bounce backs. You lack security. Email is not secure. It's like sending a postcard. So I've been using, and I recommend for any business, ShareFile.com. If you go to sharefile.com, you can see why sharefile is such a great difference. Citrix understands the challenge of business, and they built a better solution for business. That's why millions of accountants, lawyers, and other business professionals rely on sharefile. Very easy for anyone to use. You can send files of almost any size securely. You can track the progress of your files. Notifications are automatically sent when the files are open, and you can control who has access by using tools like password protection. You can even sign and edit files for streamlined collaboration. Plus, with ShareFile, you can access files anywhere. Laptops, smart phone, tablet. Uh, I want you to try ShareFile free. We, I've been so happy with it. I'd like to give you a chance to try it for 30 days. Visit ShareFile.com. You don't need a credit card. There's nothing to lose. 
Just click the microphone and enter TWIT. You will want to select your industry because ShareFile customizes for a really big number of industries, and that's one of the things I particularly like about it. For instance, HIPAA compliant if you're in the, the medical industry. So choose your industry, use the TWIT offer code, and enjoy ShareFile free for 30 days. Look at this. Engineering, planning, ev event planning, photography, printing, publishing, software, tech services. I love it. ShareFile.com. Use the offer code TWIT. Uh, we were... <sighs> So we talked about did I did we talk about it on the show the the uh, taking the picture of the seat? Yes, we did. Yeah. Okay. Was that the is that on the show? I thought maybe it was before the show. I can't remember now. Uh, can't remember. So that's now. the problem with talking before at all. the show. All right, I got a story. Evernote gets got hacked. Hacks. Yeah. And Evernote did something very aggressive that maybe I don't know. This is the new thing to do. LastPass did this when they got hacked. Twitter did it when they got hacked. They said immediately we were hacked. It happened February 28th. Within a day uh, or two, they said we've been hacked. They got names pa and uh, email addresses and passwords, but our password database was pro pro properly uh, encrypted using uh, hashes and salt. It's a heavily salted hash, which is a delicious breakfast. It treat. is, especially with an egg. <laughs> and, uh, but, so even though there really was no uh, risk, they said no data was uh, compromised, no user data was compromised, but we're going to reset everybody's uh, password just in case. And this is what Twitter did. Yeah, it's annoying. It's the new thing to do. Re just in case, even though there's no harm done, we're going to reset everybody's password. Do you think that's overreaction? I mean, or is this now the new norm? I, I agree it's annoying, but I think it's probably good security hygiene. So, you know, it's these, kind of the new these, thing is admit to admit everything cuz banks for years have just pretended nothing care. was going on. Yeah, they'd rather have them. We weren't hacked. What's that? That's why they need the excuse to charge 18% interest. Yeah. Hash passwords can be decrypted if there was uh you know, if the hackers were targeting a few people in particular, um it's it's probably likely that over time they could decrypt those passwords. So well, with because of rainbow tables and so forth, merely hashing is insufficient. But hashing with with uh, enough salt is pretty secure. It's unlikely that they're going to get. Anyway, uh, they've reset the passwords. The real security. I'll tell you, the real security issue has nothing to do with that. It has to do with if I use the same password on Evernote that I used on fifteen other sites. If they did get my password, that might be more of a problem. But that would assume that they this would doesn't know that. what the sites are that you're. Well, membering. they try them all. But they don't know. Well, maybe. Uh, you know, if you use monkey123 as a password, which I know you do. I do. Uh, and then I get that password through Evernote. Maybe I didn't get any Evernote data, but now I can try logging into Twitter, Hotmail. Yeah, but I don't Google. use the same username because, on everything. Well, I can guess your username. What? Dvorak at Dvorak.org? No. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> no. John at Dvorak.org? But that's my John email. John C. Dvorak? Well, but a lot of times it's just your email address. It, well... I don't Prepare really, to get spammed after the show goes onto the downloads. I know. I never get spammed. He gets no spam. I get no spam. It's a remarkable... Uh, That's because I use a system? Feet of nature. C-T-Y-M-E dot com. It's a plug for the service. Does that, you haven't plugged them in a long time. That's I good. just did. What does that stand for? Computer time. Computer, Computer time, time. Web hosting. Web hosting. Uh, anyway, I, I admire Evernote for... Being aggressive about this, I just wonder. This is what everybody does right now. Yeah, it says I get no spam on it. Computer Time website with a picture of John. And by the way, that the website. I just want to point out that Computer Time website. They haven't redesigned that since 1990. He is a he's a traditionalist. Yeah, it's actually I retro. Seen, I haven't very seen retro. Rain, I haven't seen rainbow bars. <laughs> Let me, I he doesn't have the cat running across the bottom like he used to, but the rest of it is There's good. There's actually the fish with feet. Right next to the, the church, church of reality. reality. Oh, yeah, that's his church, yeah. Well. C-T-Y-M-E. The great thing about C-T-Y-M-E.com is that Mark, the, the, the host, <laughs> what happened? I'm just showing the site. Oh, yeah, the great thing about you this know, guy. I'm surprised it's not cycling rainbows. And you know what he's, really yeah, one, well, he's had that, but they yeah. took it off. Yeah. So he, he will not give the government anything. He already said that. Yeah, he says it. He'll tell I you. I don't care. It. He says, screw it. Throw Free me in jail. Speech. I am not going to give it. Because he does all the uh, sites or all these uh, oh. radical organizations. You missed a bit, though. This little email icon would be really cool if the door was opening and then the mail was flying into it and the door would close. <laughs> that would have been really cool. Yeah, I've talked to Mark about this. He refuses to change it because it's more secure this way, the way he sees it.
It's like, you know what? Steve Gibson said. No thing. Java. Steve, Steve no, Gibson, you, same thing. No JavaScript, no, no Java. You're asking for trouble. I write everything in assembly language. Yeah, is that's the way this guy is, too. Yeah. No, I, you know, uh, th thank God bless him. Thank God. For, these are the prototypical, proto geeks, the original geeks. Yeah, the ones well, he's been that, around forever. The ones that started it all. Does he have a neck beard? I haven't seen him for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bradley Manning pleads guilty. Um, yeah, after he's beaten enough. Yeah. Uh, he says, um, it's actually an interesting article from uh, Yokai Benkler at uh, MIT in uh, the New Republic, the dangerous logic of the Bradley uh, Manning case. Um, is it, all right, just, just, to, just saying he did it, he, he pleaded guilty. Uh, he says he had good reason for doing it. He was uh, really, ups uh, you know, uh, dismayed by uh, what the army was up to. He felt it was uh, uh, a patriotic thing to be a whistleblower. Well, it started apparently. The, the, the last story I heard was that he had known that they had tried to do a uh, Freedom of Information Act to get that helicopter video, which is the first thing he, he right. Out, and that was which is the guy saying, "Hey, look, there's another guy walking around. Let's yeah, kill him." Taking pot shots and they're of people on shooting the street. guys. Yeah. Say, oh, this guy's gonna help the other guy. Let's right. kill him. So uh, he thought that was uh, abhorrent. And so he decided to just throw that video out there. Benkler says the prosecution case seems designed quite simply to terrorize future national security whistleblowers. That's probably true. I'd like oh, to yeah, know why he, example of him. why he couldn't shut up about it. He didn't get caught for the helicopter thing. And so he says, well, if they didn't catch me on this, I'll go do something else. Then he bragged about it. I, you know, he just brought... Yeah, you know. but they're bringing a charges like aiding the enemy, punishable by death. They're looking... Yeah, good I luck mean, with are, that. Yeah. So it's a capital offense. It's not going to happen. It, rem it reminds me a little bit of the um, Aaron Schwartz case, where just this prosecutorial Well, they did manage to kill him. Overreaching, you know? Yeah. You don't want to be an enemy of the state. God, no. Heaven forfend. That's the lesson, isn't it? We discussed this on No Agenda Show every I, I'm sure you do. Thursdays I don't know why I'm Sunday. even bringing it up. Just you shouldn't be Stop listening it to Twit. Go listen to No Agenda. Well, you shouldn't, we should need tech news. Steve Mann, you know who he is. The MIT uh, guy who uh, for years wore uh, computers around. He was the guy who really invented wearable computing. Yeah. He's got some warnings. I think I met him once. Yeah, you couldn't miss him. I mean, in, back in 95, he's wearing this outfit around. It's uh, It looks like he's carrying a... Uh, a, a, a Pentium 90 PC yeah. on his waist. Either that or a royal typewriter. And he's got an antenna on his head. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, uh, yeah. But well, he's talking to Google about Project Glass, and he says, be careful because you can... I've been, for a long time, I've been saying Project Glass is like Steve Martin and the Jerk, those glasses that... Uh, remember he invented the handle that you pull the glasses off and he made millions <laughs> of dollars until people sued him because they all ended up cross-eyed because of the handle? This guy says that could happen. He says training people to look into this screen yeah, I, I, he has might be more right. long-term consequences to your vision than you might think. I think it's possible. Google could end up with a bunch of cross-eyed users. Just like the, the guys Just that like work the there. Just like the jerk. He said, Stepping for instance. Stepping on each other's he, he, joke. He, he, <laughs> Just like, no, because I had a different joke. Well, I said just like the jerk. You said just like the guys that work at Google. Yeah, my, I, mine should we was have a vote? Nasty or uh, mine was was um, I don't know. He talks about the um, the vision scientist who did the experiment of wearing a, a prism. His name George Stratton. That uh, on his glasses this was in the 1890s that turned the world upside down. You know, we you're, you're, we actually do see the world upside down, but the brain reverses it. So Stratton put these glasses on to turn it around. He said within two days, he adjusted. It was completely normal. Everything looked upright to him. Yeah. Uh, it, so you adjusted very quickly. But <laughs> after he took the glasses off, it took a long time for his vision to return to normal. He said he called everything. He said his vision had a bewildering air. <laughs> I bet it did. Uh, and and uh, this guy, uh, man, says that, in fact, this has exactly been my experience, that you can adjust fairly quickly, but to readjust after wearing something like Google Glass for a long period of time could be very challenging. He wears glasses that let him that give see the world in HDR, which is kind of interesting, with video feeds. Mm. Boy, we're really getting the conversation going on this. It's a, 
<laughs> All right. Let's talk about glass. Are you guys are you guys getting uh, planning to get one? I uh, I'm on the list. You know, I got the little paperweight, number seven thirty seven. The glass. They haven't uh, charged me yet. Fifteen hundred bucks. But I'm completely skeptical about wearable computing of all kinds, including I'm not Apple kidding. Watches and uh, My Google son Glass. says this is going to be the greatest thing. He says if you were, well, he's like your age, the greatest thing because you can you can do all kinds of things with it. I said, what? And he could, you know, well. Yeah, like you, what? Take video of your balloon trip. You can t take videos and demand or I don't know what. Horace, isn't this stimulated by the intense demand on companies to come up with the next big thing, whether people want it or not? Well, it is to some degree. The problem I see, though, is that we're trying to see what the technology can deliver and trying to really just find the problems with the technology. It's like you have a tool and you're trying to find the solution or the problem that it can solve. Exactly. And, and, and it's backwards. The, the, the the right way to do it is sort of let me put it uh, let me put it this way. Watching the video, I got the impression that this solves the problem of people who are very very active physically, <laughs> like you know. Uh, and how many of us really have these sort of needs of yeah, being it's too much trouble to know. hold the camera while I'm jumping out of an airplane? So I have some glasses that will do right. That and for me. and and th there there are a lot of problems we have that are not solved, and and these problems are usually basic things like you know I want to be feeling comfortable, I want to be somehow feeling that my family loves me. These are real problems. The idea of having more technology solving uh, the, the, you know, this, this idea of, of hyperactive lifestyles is not really the mainstream problem. I think the really innovation that's going to be rewarded will be on things like, well, uh, let's convert our computers from being tools to being companions. Mm. Let's convert our computers from being uh, utilitarian to being uh, to being enlightening, uh, wow. and, and that that is really these are human needs. It's like imagine imagine uh, hiring a computer to be uh, to be your 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 advisor, and it wouldn't you know you wouldn't think of the computer as you do today, but it would be sort of almost personified. That is the future, and I think that we're getting there bit bit by bit. And I think Google is as, as good a chance as anyone. But I think that the idea of technology is being packaged in a in a in a as a tool is is passe, frankly. And I think we got to move on. You know, I wrote a column recently about this, suggesting the possibility that this is actually just a joke. It's a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. You know, what was it that uh, that Larry? Or no, I'm sorry, Sergey said it. Ted. That it's emasculating, well, emasculating to look at your phone. To look at your phone? Yeah. It makes it sound like a joke now. Yeah, no, I know. I thought that was a very You're good emas. Odd... You're looking at your phone. <laughs> yeah. You should be looking through glass. He says you'll be rubbing an inanimate object. You are girly. Why would you be rubbing it all day, the re the object? You know, it's it's just very suggestive. <laughs> Uh, I mean, maybe this, maybe glass isn't even designed for a mainstream audience. Maybe it is I designed for, for ex, uh, you know, sk for Military. skaters and for. Uh, is this a special case of the innovator's player. dilemma that you become very successful, then you only design uh, solutions for the one percent? I mean, look at the uh, the Chromebook Pixel. Who is that? For? Another example. That's right. Yeah, you know, that, yeah. that, that's less than one percent. Another it's a one that's thirteen hundred dollars. It's, it's not even like, the right aspect computer. of any ratio it's, that it's no three by made. two. It's three yeah. by two. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, Horace. Is, now it sounds like he wants to defend the Pixel. No, I well, I mean, it's 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 in some ways it's it's the right approach. I mean, the idea of having a, a you know a, what we used to call, you remember. Uh, network computers right i mean this is not a this is not a new idea the idea yeah, but what if you design a solid gold thin client would that make it better somehow and how is it the right approach it's a three by two aspect ratio thing that does nothing and it's thirteen hundred dollars it's overpriced that's not the right approach the right, right approach is cheap well exactly. they make they make cheap yeah that's what they should stick with why are they making a thirteen hundred dollar netbook or net, uh, whatever the disruptive thing to do would be to go in at the low end and make it available to people who don't have computers today. I right. think that's the job of smartphones to some degree. But if they wanted to really try to change the the, the you know change the 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 landscape of of computing, they would have to probably solve the problem at the low end, not not at thirteen hundred dollars. I there I must be. I mean, these guys are not dumb. There must be a no. reason for glass. There must be a reason for the pixel. No. Was there a reason for the Nexus Q? The no. Q. There's another the winner. All you that, connect to your TV. Just because and it somebody, do anything? yeah, the Q is a good example. It's just because they're not dumb doesn't mean that everything they do is they're not gods. 
Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think Sergey's kind the of nicest the nicest thing well, he's I got three say. jets, and maybe it makes a difference. I, I mean, the only good thing you can imagine uh, is that they're learning. Okay, so these are the types of products you do to kind of get your team working together and figure out how to make hardware. Right. But again, I'm, 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 you know, because it's actually harder to make cheap stuff than to make expensive stuff. One thing I, I kind of sometimes bring up is it's harder to engineer a Fiat than it is to engineer a Ferrari. Right. You think about it because the Ferrari, you're only going to make a couple of hundred of them. To engineer the Fiat, you got to work it out how it's going to be, uh, you know, manufactured in huge quantities and, and sold to, 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 you know, the dealer networks and serviced and so on. So that that's a completely different problem. And But you might actually start by building the Ferraris because you, you, you're going to act, actually work with a small team. You're going to learn all the problems and then you're going to scale and actually make the cheap stuff later. I don't know. That's that's the only nice thing I can say about this approach. Is Chrome OS a success? Uh, no. Well, <laughs> no. I agree. <laughs> um, it, you know, you you could talk to some specific segments. You know, it reminds me of the Newton, actually, which is certain segments made sense. For instance, I don't uh, know that the Newton ever made sense to anybody. <laughs> or the okay, the go the slate. Where it, uh, the early stylus tablets yeah, yeah, was, made sense in certain vertical markets on the factory floor or maybe a physician. Right. It seems like the Pixel makes sense if you want to make a dashboard for a CEO. Uh, you don't want a cheesy netbook, but you don't want anything too sophisticated because the guy's a moron. So, But you want it to look nice. <laughs> like it's a specialty product. Glass similarly. Um I don't know. That's what it feels the like Chrome? to me. And I don't see that. I don't see that there's a, that the Chrome OS has a market. There's a there's a market in education for a twenty dollar a month cheap laptop that the kid can't really get into trouble with. That's that's one use for it. But these are very specialized markets. The Chrome OS always seems to be. Uh, I mean, first of all, they announced it like a year or two before it actually became available on any products. Um, but the team Mike itself Glass. always seems to be about a year or two behind every trend. Right. They released the the original Chromebook a year after uh, people stopped buying netbooks. And they have the Chrome box. Chrome box. Yeah, that that's nice. I have it's one. It's like a Mac Mini with the Chrome OS on it. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't do anything. You know what most people do with these things? They put Linux on it. <laughs> you say, okay, thanks. Yeah, but you still need Thanks for the storage. hardware. I'm going to put Linux on it. You need yeah, storage. Yeah, you don't have a lot of storage. That's right. And I think the Pixel is coming out now a year after people have lost interest in uh, Ultrabooks. End. Yeah. Well, this is an Ultrabook. No, this Ultrabooks. Nice to Ultrabook. be honest, lost interest. I have one. Yeah. I like little thin. Uh, is it a Chromebook? One. No, an Ultrabook. Ultrabooks are different than I Chromebooks. I think Chromebooks is like I know, a netbook. I think concept. netbook is the no, word, no, is the no, word you're looking for. No, no, it's not the same concept. For. There's a it's standalone machine. It's a solid-state memory. Yeah, it's but it's got a hard disk, as it were. It's got a, a solid-state hard disk. It's standalone. It's got Windows or runs Linux. And you can work with it without being hooked to the Internet. Actually, this so it's point, a lot different. after using Windows 8 on this Acer for a while, I, th I wouldn't mind Chrome OS. It might be better. <laughs> well, you're getting going to get you're Windows gonna get a sho very... mouse shoulder the way you keep. I know I have to. <laughs> you keep poking at the thing. I don't know. Um, you should run a uh, classic desktop, whatever that thing is, and get rid of this. Yeah, classic shell. Yeah, yeah classic shell. Yeah, It'll, you'll li like it a lot better. You'll see. So why is Sergey Brin going after? By the way, and this is the other thing that puzzles me about Chrome OS because. Google has a very credible operating system. It's called Android. It seems to be taking over the world. What I don't they... understand why they don't make a computer. Make an Android computer. Yeah. Make a Pixel that runs Android. That would be something I'd buy. Well, you it's still 250,000 apps. Still expensive. I don't think Andy Rubin is interested in the computer market. So I it's, think it's, it's a, Andy that's keeping that from happening. It's Andy? Andy Rubin? Do you think Andy and Sergey are going to get in a fight because Sergey said that Andy's product is emasculating? <laughs> I mean, what here's is he calling him out? He's calling this is Andy a company, out for this being is a company a, that makes a lot of money on Android, right? Or am yeah, I wrong? He's calling you know, tons, yeah, and they also spent a lot of money on a phone company. They bought Motorola right. for the patents. Um, yeah, they don't. You know, They're, even this is another one. Also Google said. Phones. Google even said, "Who was it that said at Google? Was it Larry?" Yeah, but those Motorola phones are crap. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Their CFO in a presentation. It was a CFO. Yeah, yeah though we're not really uh, that proud really of what up to they're our not. They're not really. What, <laughs> what is what is with this company? I don't know. They're weird. They're wacky. I like it. They're different. Um, you're standing around. Just it says. I, I wonder if I have the video of Sergey saying this. 
And he's wearing those things. He, he thinks he thinks rubbing a, a featureless piece of glass is more emasculating than wearing the Borg glasses. Yeah, the Borg. They always had those glasses. These are on. very macho. These they, he looks so macho. He looks like a robot. R Borg are not macho. They're they're uh, disgusting. They're horrible beasts. All right. Onward. Onward. Teens are tiring of Facebook. We find this out, in fact, <laughs> from uh, from Facebook. Um, so it starts with a a, uh, a uh, post from, who was it that, that left Facebook? I don't have his name in front of me. You guys know what I'm talking about? No, I don't know anything about it. You know, uh, Blake, not, Ro I, Blake Ross, uh, the director uh, right. of product at Facebook, quits. Why? <laughs> well, and this is my question. Was he making a joke? Because he said why. He, he posted a letter on his profile page, which he later took down saying, I'm leaving to become a Forbes writer, which is a questionable career choice, but okay, because... Oh, no, I'm leaving because of Forbes writer. There, that makes more sense. Because of Forbes writer. Because a Forbes writer asked his son's best friend, Todd, if Facebook was still cool, and the friend said no, and plus none of his friends think so either, even Lila, who used to love it, and this journalism made 12? me... 12? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> and this journalism, I think it's a joke. That's tongue in cheek. Oh, and this journalism made it. me reconsider the long term viability of the company. Now he says, no, I'm just trying new things. But, and I think that this was a ham headed like, joke. But now everybody's saying, oh, maybe uh, if, if Ross is leaving because Facebook's no longer hip, maybe it's over. And Facebook even admitted in its 10K that it might be using, losing younger users. Is Facebook over? You're young. Yeah, you're Mark young. Mark Million is our, is our, our kid. Is our yeah. kid. <laughs> You mean do some tech support for you? Uh, yeah. 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 Anyway. yeah, come on. That's Can a good you, I can't figure out how to turn this off. Is it got a switch? <laughs> is, is it over for Facebook? Well, Mark? With kids. We're with waiting. The young, with the young I'm gonna people. I'm going to go with no. No? Okay. But, but social Tumblr, networks do tend to be trendy. Yeah, and Tumblr is kind of, Tumblr is huge with the young people. Yeah, but used for a very different thing. Uh, Twitter is the same way. I mean, all, all of these can go coexist they right coexist. now. But you don't leave one for the other one. Right? Uh, there's no... Adam Rifkin know, for, for what, says Tumblr is Facebook 2.0. Really? Mm -hmm. Tumblr may already have eclipsed Facebook that. as the most popular social network among 13 to 25 I year olds. I don't use either one, and I still That's don't see That's because you're it. not 13 to 25. This is true. You haven't seen that in a few years. Well, I could see <laughs> what it do you again see? I if use I'm Facebook. reincarnated. You use Facebook. I use Facebook because I'm an old guy. You use Tumblr. I do use Tumblr. Okay. Mark, you use Tumblr? Uh, minimally. Minimally. Okay. Someone in the chat room mentioned Snapchat, and I, I think that's Snapchat's a, hot. a credible competitor to Facebook for time. I mean, it's and not going to become sort of the phone Insta book picture. The that but, other didn't, one. but didn't Facebook, maybe Facebook felt the same way because Mark Zuckerberg stayed up late one night and wrote Poke. And it hasn't, wrote Poke, and it hasn't really. It hasn't done much. He's much. done, yeah. Stayed up late one night. Hmm. He did. He wrote it. You know, that was the funny thing is he wrote, he says anyway. He can he code. It. He can code. He's proven it. Boy, this is a great week for tech news. Boy, it's terrible. You know why? I'm going to tell you right now what happened. Tell me what happened. You re you changed the 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 style me? of the show. It's yes. my fault. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened. You took this show and you flipped it by putting that Tom Merritt oh, guy. I, did. I screwed it all at up. the beginning. Should have put it at the it's end. It's like new Coke. And you all of a sudden, the, the whole the universe. I blame the bobblehead. And that didn't help. That the Chris Perillo thing. And so you've, you, the universe is, is, is having a, uh, a fit. According to Timo News, good as series, any. T Mobile may be unveiling its new contract free system later this month, as early as m March 4th, uh, going to effect March 24th. T Mobile's CEO has been talking for some time about eliminating long term contracts, going month to month, unsubsidizing phones, I guess. They rebranded themselves as the Uncarrier. They got a Jamaican guy, and he said, T-Mobile, it's the uncarrier, man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, they're going to they're gonna, uh, still they're gonna sell the iPhone. Um, you may love your iPhone, but you hate AT&T. You're going to love T-Mobile. Will this be enough to save the number four carrier? Are I, they number four? I think they are, right? Sprint's not. I like yeah, T-Mobile. Number four. 
they have a deal on T-Mobile that's thirty bucks a month. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it, pure price performance. It's great. Yeah, and the and the sur and the quality of the of the uh, of both the uh, surfing and the voice is not bad. You're using a Nexus Four on T-Mobile. Unlocked Nexus 4 on T-Mobile? This is a Galaxy Google. Oh, it's a Galaxy Google. <laughs> and it's unlocked, yes. Still no LTE. Um, and the, the strategy in the U.S. for not doing, not subsidizing phones, not doing contracts has just not worked. I mean, Leap, uh, Leap Wireless got the iPhone. Uh, I think Leap it was has starting the with the 5. Wow. Yeah. Um, unsubsidized, so you pay five or $600 right. to get it, and they're not Nobody's selling it. Yeah, it's it, people are surprisingly uh, sensitive to the upfront cost, even though that's the month to month that kills you. Yeah, I mean Google took a shot at that too with their uh, with their Android store. Yeah, um, yeah, and and that you know flopped within six months. I think it's just not a model that works in the U.S. And yet in Asia and Europe, that's right. that's the standard. I think American cell phone users have Stockholm syndrome. We've come to love our hostage. Takers. I was never taken hostage. I've always used unlocked phones. You used to use those uh, cheap 7-Eleven Go phones. Oh, yeah. The, the burners. You right, the ones you could throw away. Yeah. You can make your deal on the phone, and <laughs> right. in the can it goes. Throw it away. I learned that you on the wire. Wipe, you got to wipe it first because they do whole fingerprints. Right. Wow, this is really exciting. What else? The Nook. What's happening is Barnes and... Okay. I was always a little worried about Barnes and Noble in the, you know, as a brick and mortar retailer in the face of Amazon. Uh, the Kindle is killer. Barnes and Noble created the Nook. Now they're saying uh, year over year, 25% drop in uh, ebook sales at uh, Barnes. Why don't they sell their ebooks to work on the Kindle? They sell more books. 25.9% ebooks and devices. In the quarter, they're getting January killed 26th. by Amazon. They're That's getting the problem. killed. Yeah. And the uh, the co-founder of Barnes and Noble, I read recently, was saying, you know, I'd be interested in buying back Barnes and Noble, but I don't want the Nook. You guys can <sighs> can spin out that division and hang on to it. Well, and Microsoft put three hundred million dollars into Nook. Yep. That, uh, that lost. I don't remember that. Up. Yeah. Why? <laughs> that was one of the questions many asked at the time. Uh -huh. Now we're really wondering. Um, so there's been a call recently for Steve Ballmer's head, and I think it's louder than it said. You've been, you're a Bloomberg. You should notice this. I oh, think yeah. it's louder than before. I think they're really getting, they're they're really going after him. Uh, I don't get the sense that it's at a fever pitch right now, and and like you were alluding to, it's been happening for the last five years at least. Yeah, I agree with that. But um, I, I just but seemed louder to me. Windows 8 for sure, uh, and the Surface uh, will be pretty important. Um, if he makes it to next year, the Xbox 360, uh, whatever the next Xbox is, will These pictures of we'll Balmer, should, on that. he should get a public relations person to get he, these things He's been off working the internet. on a music video career. I think you should watch this. This is a, something Balmer is doing with Taylor Swift, I think. <laughs> If the, if the Microsoft thing doesn't work out. Yeah, 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 you could do a little something you could do. Backup there. singer. <laughs> Horace is saying, why did I do this show? I should never have done this show. <laughs> Horace, you have a show on the 5x5 five five network, don't you? <laughs> yeah. There's a backup. I got a backup. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break. Please, John, I beg of you, find a story that will galvanize this audience, galvanize yeah, this audience, panel, get us that's talking. That's what the problem is. We have a dead audience. They're, they're dead because we're dead. It's because I put the Tom Merritt commercial in the wrong spot. I know it. You're right. You know, I always thought he was, until today, I swore that he was always live. That gave it away when he said, thanks, Leo, even though I didn't throw it to him. Is yeah. That what gave it away? I think so, and I never yeah. noticed this before. I'm Our stunned. show today brought to you by Squarespace.com. They've added something new. Mm -hmm. So we had Mr. Dandy in here. He's the guy who made this um, lovely uh, Leo uh, bobblehead doll. And we were telling Mr. Dandy, he has a Squarespace site at MrDandy.com. We said, you know, what you got to do is you got to upgrade to the Squarespace e-commerce. You could sell these things directly. They have an e-commerce thing they going now on have, now? So Squarespace, we've talked about it before. Do they the, take credit cards? They do. It's the best hosting. Do they process? Yes. They don't even take a cut of the processing. What? Yes. 
Well, that could be. Are you PayPal. interested in that? Yeah, I yeah. Am. I'm going to get check PayPal. This. Well, you no, know, get out use, of that. You know, the noagendashow.com uses uh, 24 bucks a month Squarespace commerce, e commerce. Squarespace. They'll set you up with a, a merchant account. They take no cut, just 24 bucks a month. That's a really good deal for hosting plus the best content management software. Uh, you could try it right now just to go to squarespace.com. You don't need a credit card. Just use our offer code. Actually, they won't even ask for an offer code. They just set you up for two weeks. If you decide to buy, take a look at what you get. Uh, Squarespace's pricing has always been aggressive. Again, remember, this is hosting plus their content management system, mobile responsive, beautiful designs. The e-commerce is just one of the three packages. You get the basic package, $8 a month when you buy an annual plan. It's uh, $10 month to month. $16 for the unlimited plan. Now add to the unlimited plan commerce and you get 24 bucks a month. You get a fully integrated e-commerce solution for physical or digital goods. They give you coupons. You want to do coupons, codes, inventory, tracking, tax. They calculate the tax for every state. Oh, that's good. Every region. That's going to be very important. Huge, right? Yeah, it's a waste Amazon of time. Amazon was pretending they couldn't figure out but how to do it. you still have to submit the money. What about that? They do the whole thing. Do Shipping. they submit the money to the states? I don't know. You should ask them. Uh, it doesn't say. It doesn't sound like they would. Well, maybe you could do that. It's a lot of work. Write a check. It's a it's a crock. The whole idea that I should be selling something in California to something in to someone in Louisiana well, don't, and don't have to send them money. Oh, don't collect that's it your and, idea. and let the let the governor Jindal come to your home. Yeah, yeah, he probably would. Squarespace uh, offers this with no limits on. The number of pages, galleries, blogs, no bandwidth limit. You will never get a bandwidth bill. So if you suddenly go viral, no big deal. Unlimited That'll storage, and you can never, you can never bring a Squarespace site down. Really great, really great system. Um, and boy, with now with the e-commerce, what do you want to sell? Candles, dolls, digital goods, voodoo dolls, voodoo dolls. You, I tell you what, we'll get Mr. Danny to sell the Leo doll, and you can sell the pins. Right? It could be like a one-two punch. Yeah. I'll give you some hairs. Just, you know, because you need the full kit. You get the doll, but then you have to paste the hair onto it. Is that right? Pick, poke it with a pin. I don't know any of this. Oh, you got to learn your voodoo. Hmm. That you do so well. Squarespace.com does it so well. Squarespace.com. If you decide to buy, though, would you do me a favor? Use our offer code TWIT3, because it's March now, the third month of the year, in case you didn't know. Yeah, I heard that. And uh, you'll get to 10% off your first purchase. That's why an annual purchase is probably the best idea. You're going to save the most money. I, the e-commerce truly is amazing. Um, really incredible what you get for a very afford. They're, you know, they're going to, I hate to say it, but you know all those other like um, Shopify and all these guys are in trouble. This is so much better. And, and just to, probably right. Just a correction on the ad. Um, uh -oh. uh, you use a, a merchant. They set you up with a merchant service through Stripe, and Stripe does. Oh, Stripe does. Yes. Oh crap. Yes. So it's, it's Stripe takes, but it, it's, takes it's, a it's very cut. competitive. It's okay. very competitive. Well, so. they. But okay, so you're not. not but okay, but like Do you have to Visa to and Mastercard or? would anyway. So this is this is in lieu of or in addition to the credit cards fee. Um, I, I haven't researched credit, it that that's much. That's just a credit card fee. That's normal. You'd always have to do that. I think. Well, anyway, you know what? We'll find that out. Well, why don't you start selling uh, those mugs? You sent me a couple of mugs. I want to thank you. The one that came in unbroken. Uh, is Did the, the rest of them come broken? Yeah. See, we're going to do it ourselves. It's that little time. one. Yeah, the little one with the tea, with the spoon in it. Broke. Broke. It's a million pieces. The spoon weakens it. I don't like that one anyway. I, I didn't really care about that one. With the, But the other mug is intact, and that's yeah. what I cared about. So Einhorn has dropped its Apple lawsuit. Again, I'm picking really great stories, folks. <laughs> really great stories here. The the shareholders are looking for more money back. They want cash. Yeah. Apple's got it. Wants shareholders dividend. want it. Yeah, and they deserve it because the shareholders are really the owners of the company. Uh, what could Apple possibly do with, what are they at, $120 billion now? Something like something, that or more. Something insane. Um, they just, it does seem that, that if they wanted the shareholders to buy into the idea that maybe they're going to do something with the money, they should spend some. Instead of just accumulating it, right? Yeah, just hoarding. Horace, where should Apple spend its money? Well, I think, yeah, I, I could give you a simple answer, and I think that would be capacity in manufacturing. But I think uh, uh, they're doing it already, but they can't spend enough. There's, they're putting in about 10 to $12 billion a year in uh, equipment to manufacture things. So this is mostly fabrication 
uh, equipment fabs, as they say, in, in either displays or maybe some of the semiconductor stuff they're doing with so, uh, in Taiwan. So you're not talking about cutting out Foxconn? You, you're just manufacturing new types oh, of no, processors? No. Fox, Foxconn, store. it's a misconception that, to think that Foxconn is a big part of the value chain. Foxconn, uh, the labor components uh, are generally quite low. They're like 3 to $8 per phone. The semiconductors are, you know, 100 to 200 dollars a phone. That's where the real costs are. And so, in, in order to to really solve the problem of capacity and the problem of scale, they need to really double and triple production every year. Um, and so, the problem is that right now a lot of that is held by by Samsung for microprocessors, uh, but they need to somehow find a, a second source. And it takes years. That's the other thing you have to appreciate is that the orders that are going in now for production are probably going to be product shipping in two years from now because you've got to build the plants, you've got to build the uh, the lines, you've got to test everything. And so, you, you you know, whatever was shipping in the fall was probably designed uh, for, for manufacturing in 2010. It's yeah. about two years. It's lead. similar to Intel, right? The same issue for Intel. They have to plan way ahead. Absolutely. In. Yeah. Absolutely. So is Apple the, building fabs? Well, they, they're built. They, someone else owns the fabs, but Apple buys the equipment that, that goes into the fabs. That's the most important and most expensive part of the fab. Right. But as far as the building and the labor force and the regulations and dealing with the governments and the permits, that's a that's the partner's responsibility. Again, we're talking about a. a some of the components. Uh, Samsung probably does not get funding from Apple for its equipment, but I would imagine uh, Sharp and others in, in Japan are doing, are getting it right now. Um, in fact, that's, I think, already been, been uh, declared. But yeah. we're dealing with numbers, like, just keep in mind that Apple spends more on CapEx for manufacturing than Taiwan Semiconductor. And they're about a half of uh, Samsung's level right now. They spend more than Intel. You, you actually, it was a real eye opener for me when you did that analysis on asimco.com of capital expenditures by Apple. They spelled, spend about eight billion dollars a year, more than eight billion. Yeah, it's over ten. Um, and they, on a quarterly basis, they overtook uh, Intel, but it may not be over, on a yearly basis. Okay. And way above out, other software uh, or uh, companies like Amazon or Google or Microsoft. Right, because they don't need fabs. They would be spending it on infrastructure, and Apple has its own, right? This right. is the, the servers and, and the data centers. But those, those, you know, I would imagine Apple spends 10 to 20 percent of its of its capex in that area, and they do declare that that they do uh, make those investments. But I want to point out one thing that that I think maybe also is not being uh, observed right now, and it just came out actually in the news this week. Um, is that in, increasingly there are now semiconductors uh, semiconductors being built into um, the connectors, uh, right? So um, the I don't know. You guys probably already heard about this. This is the lightning adapter that comes um, that you it's can got buy an from. ARM chip in it, right? And it's the same processor that the iPhone one had. <laughs> and this, so this <laughs> in this, the connector. A, yeah, there's a connector, and and not only that, but it's got two gigs of memory. What? Yeah, Three. And, and it, it has uh, it has it boots in uh, it boots a uh, a kernel uh, of, of of Unix and of course it's uh, it's OS 10 Unix and uh, it has to boot and it's upgradable so you can actually do a software update uh, to the connector and so the the thing you have to you, you know so this is the old one the old one was a pass through there was no intelligence this is not for well. all ARM connectors this is for their video connector. Yeah, the yeah. HDMI, the digital, yeah. digital uh, lightning AV adapter. Right. Yeah. I am. I understand that the reason is that it, it, it you know, the lightning connector is serial, and, H, and HDMI needs to be parallelized, right. so they need to somehow create create the signal from from uh, from uh, a certain encoding to another. But the, the interesting thing to me is that you imagine the intelligence um, or the processing power you need to embed in all kinds of things. Now they're moving processors, not just into phones, but now we're seeing processors in, entering into peripherals and into actual connectors between peripherals. And each microprocessor has to build, be built by somebody and the memory has to be sourced. And, and this is just going to be at the point where we're not counting computers like we do in terms of right. units of, 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 uh, of uh, laptops or, or PCs and, you know, like Gartner would. We're going to see intelligent 
processing going on in, in, in all kinds of things that we don't think of as computers. And, and someone needs to build that stuff and, and the control points that you're going to end up with, who, who has the capacity. I'm giving a talk actually next week um, asking the question if the ecosystem wars will actually be, be won and fought on the, on the factory floor uh, rather than, than uh, amongst the developer community. That's, that's a very interesting uh, question. I don't know the answer to, but I think it's, uh, it's something we need to uh, start exploring. I mean, there are some advantages to Apple to making these connectors so smart. Of course, it they, they means others can't make cheap knockoffs of them. Um, the, the guys at Panic who discovered this ARM chip in the connector uh, speculated maybe that the connector could be AirPlay capable, which is a wild idea. You wouldn't, <laughs> I don't know exactly which way. That maybe you would uh, connect. I don't know. You wouldn't need a a device. Okay. <laughs> this is a computer. Uh -huh. It's a connector. Uh -huh. It's got a 256k megs of RAM. I would hook a keyboard to it. I, re I remember going into a computer store, and the guy was saying, "You know what you really need on your Windows PC? It's probably Windows 95, maybe Windows 3.1. Is you need eight megs of RAM. You got two megs for the." Uh, operating system. You talk two, like this, this yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two megs for the app. You got two megs for your your uh, your uh, RAM drive, and then two megs for your cache. That's eight eight megs. And I thought, oh, no one's ever going to have eight megs in a computer. This you were in Boston. Connector, yes. What has happened? This connector has two hundred fifty six megabytes of RAM in the connector. Wow. Oh, now you're impressed. I think that's pretty uh, bizarre. Seems like you it needs think a gig. About, yeah. You get the Raspberry Pi, right? That's a huge phenomenon. Right. It's the same thing. I mean, you ever, and that was done by a bunch of ha amateurs or, does or anybody, hobbyists. Is anybody here? Do you have a Raspberry? We Pi? We have Raspberry Pi. Do you here. have one? Yeah, you, somewhere. You, you have one? Yeah. Do you have one, Horace? Horace, you got no, one? No, no, I don't. I don't. What would he no. do with a Raspberry Pi? He'd throw it at somebody's face. <laughs> Not that kind of pie. Oh. No, there's. They, in fact, they just cracked a million Raspberry Pis sold. They cracked them? That's well, a number. They pushed the. Th they went through the ceiling of the number. Was this a? Uh, That's a bad. For who the, who invested in this company? Nobody. It's Cambridge, like university, Cambridge University. Hmm. This reminds me of the, of the it, phenomenon. It, it, this is a repeat. This is a cycle. This is the old, remember the Sinclair One Hundred? Yes, it, the it, little it was very much inspired by that ninety nine dollar yes, computer that didn't Brits. do anything. Well, Raspberry Pi does something. You can run Raspberry Pi as a media center. We said, in fact, we did a know how episode a couple of weeks ago, putting XB. There's an XBMC version for Raspberry Pi. You put uh, Pi MB, X, MBCS, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. <laughs> XBM Pi. I don't know what you call it. You put that on there, and you've got a media center on a $35 Raspberry Pi. And then what do I do with this media center? You put it on can your I TV. Put, it's a smart, I, now it's your smart TV. Can I uh, get Netflix on it? Yeah, yes. Through the media center? Yes. Through the Raspberry Pi? Yes. Huh. So I don't need a boxy box? It's just like a boxy box. Is it just like a, a, a Roku? XPMC and the boxy box are the same software. It's not like a... Well, yeah, it's like a Roku, but it's So I don't need source. a Roku? No, you can replace the Roku with this. Huh. There's people making Android sticks to do the same thing. They're, they're very inexpensive. They're, I'm going to meet with the Roku CEO and find out what's going on. Well, I have to think that the low end is kind of eating away at his business a little bit. And then, of course, we just see that LG just bought part of WebOS. Did you see that? Yeah. For their smart TVs. I think that's kind of neat. WebOS? <laughs> well, they need an operating system. A lot of these, most of these TVs, to my knowledge, use Linux. Um, I guess WebO is WebOS based on Linux? Or, see, this is what's got to happen. Apple has got to bring out a TV just to save the mess that we're getting into with all this kind of crazy stuff. No, going this on. is they all good. Standardize. This is, this is let a... No, thousand flowers no, bloom. No, 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 no. Web based for a for a TV does not make a lot of sense to me. I mean, it would need to the applications would need to run um, in a very high resolution to look good on an HD TV. And you mean Web OS to, is not capable of that, or no, there's no native applications for Web OS. I mean, it's right. all well, LG would have to write in JavaScript. Well, oh, I see what you're saying. And it's I, uh, it's I web apps. You're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, someone in the chat room came up with, oh, no, it's better because it's open source. And I, I, I disagree. I think open source only works when there's a model for it to copy. That's why Mozilla Firefox works, because they could copy uh, IE and, and, and make it better. I, just going crazy on open source, just out of the blue, roaming around aimlessly, all you have to do is, is look on the net and all these crazy projects that are going nowhere, there's thousands of them, because they're, they're not targeting anything. You need a target for this to work, as far as I can tell. iOS or Android, which is more... 
private. Uh, what? what? What would you guess? Don't look at the headline. <laughs> I would say uh, the Apple iOS leak more. The apps leak more than the Android. Oh, wait a minute. It says what it says. That's what it says. Yeah. Uh, there's a study posted by App Authority, which evaluates apps for uh, companies, say that uh, free iPhone and iPad apps from Apple's App Store pose a greater privacy risk than free apps from Google Play. Somebody in the chat room called me on my little commentary right there, saying that Mozilla predated IE, which I don't know if that's, that's absolutely true. true. I don't think it is, but it's beside the point because they were targeting he's thinking, Netscape. He's thinking of Netscape. Well, Netscape predated Mozilla. Yeah. Netscape was yeah, there. Yeah, both. Right. Yeah. He's thinking of... Uh, I don't know what he's thinking. But the point... My he's point thinking is thinking of Mosaic, not Mozilla. No, no, he said that... Mosaic predated... Oh, maybe that's what he's thinking. And that... Well, but remember that Mark Andreessen, when he was at NCSA, wrote the first browser. I don't know if it was open source. Well, it was a team that wrote, wrote the right, browser. Right, right, Mosaic was open source, was it? No. It was not. It was closed. Well, I think it was. I don't know. I don't remember. Anybody in the chat room know? You're just, gonna, you're just making up. You're just saying no and yes. <laughs> I can't be wrong. <laughs> you're just, just saying whatever, you know, just, just making it up right as you Yeah, can. I am actually. It's a shame. <laughs> but it's come to that. <laughs> uh, Groupon CEO? Groupon CEO, Andrew Mason, fired. So the guy who Gone. came up with the idea got fired. But Leonsis, or Ted friend, Leonsis we all from Formal AOL. We all know Ted. Yeah. And Ted's a smart guy. He might be able to fix it. Is he the new CEO? Yeah. Co-CEO with uh Yeah, Wiskowski. that's always... It's always a problem when you got co-CEOs. It's an interim, though. They're looking well, at... They're usually looking one higher, of them but... gets poisoned. <laughs> no, you're thinking... Yeah, well, I get the Christie, at least. You're thinking yeah. of the Medici's. That's a different thing. Um, <laughs> is Groupon a failed model? I, it's it's not looking good right now. I've never used Groupon. I mean, I I tried I signed to. up for signed up for it once, and they started and I because I was going to go to New York, and I decided well maybe there's something there I can pick you know something going on. So I signed up and, and I said I wanted I'm going to be going to New York. And for years later, never for the rest of your life, you're they keep get sending that. me stuff about New York. They're I don't live in New York. They're going to go bank. You're, they're going to go bankrupt. You can still get those emails. They get they forever. I buy black by using my. Fantastic email system from ctyme.com. I just put it in a click the box and it got black hold. The real issue with Groupon is the cost of the sales force, right? You have to have local salespeople everywhere you are, and mm -hmm. that gets very costly, does it not? And difficult to manage. Yeah, there are also questions from the retailers about the model, about whether the retailers are pissed. Yeah, whether whether it actually converts customers, which right. is the whole appeal of doing a Groupon, or whether it's it just gets bargain seekers who come in for the one off and never come back again. So we're going to see a pivot, are we not? A pivot. A pivot for Groupon. Well, right. they've already they taken pivots. a step into a selling pivoting. goods. Yeah, uh, oh. selling, Groupon goods. You know, yeah. being more like Amazon. Like more like Fab and Fancy more than anything, right? More this sort of this idea deals. of curated e goods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Curated e-goods. <laughs> um, Andrew Mason's uh, goodbye letter was pretty insane. If anybody, saw yeah, let's it. hear it. What did it? What did Mr. Mason? I'll uh, pull out a he blamed a quote here. he blamed the analysts. Uh, Those analysts, I'm sure. Let's see. After four and a half intense and wonderful years as CEO of Groupon, I've decided that I'd like to spend more time with my family. No, oh, actually, boo. The, the, wait, wait, boo! The, nobody just, should ever say next that. Next line. Just kidding. I was fired today. <laughs> oh, good line. Okay. Good. All right, well, that's pretty, pretty. That's good. A little later on, uh, I'm okay with having failed at this part of the journey. The if Groupon was battle toads, it would be like I made it all the way to the Terra Tubes without dying on my first ever playthrough. That's a pretty awesome resignation or firing letter. He's got like tons that. of money. He could say whatever he wants. He's he's got a big exit. Uh, not a big severance, but he made plenty of money while he was yeah. there. Yeah. Some thought it was a scam. Was it a real business? Well, seems so. I don't think I it's kind of, I don't know. Like it went public. It's got the scrutiny of the uh, securities people. That's so. when it all went downhill, wasn't it? Well. Then, then quarter after quarter of bad results, <laughs> well, it kind of then it kind of starts to fall apart. Samsung will be uh, showing its Galaxy S4 in a couple of weeks, March 14th. These guys crank them out. It's official. Come and meet the next Galaxy, says the invite. How come we didn't go to Barcelona? I should have gone to Barcelona. Everybody instead else of doing did. this show. Instead of doing this show anywhere <laughs> but here. 
Uh, I wish I were at the IHOP down the road right now, actually. Um, <laughs> Barcelona is Mobile World Congress. And uh, it was, you know, I thought there'd be more announcements there. It wasn't crazy with announcements. We did, uh, Samsung released an 8-inch tablet, the Note 8. And that's going to be used as a phone, too. They have phone on it. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Mom. But that's, it turns out nothing new for them in Europe anyway. But in the U.S., they haven't put phone software on there. But you know me. I like that idea. I want, I have, I, I like big phones. Yeah, you do. I, I cannot lie. Yeah. <laughs> like Thank you for the gratuitous a bunch of, Do you notice, by the way, gags that here. half the audience has actually walked out now? <laughs> they snuck out. <laughs> I think they, I saw, they all snuck out. At least out. one of them jumped out a window there. And that and that window doesn't open. Yeah, well, he's laying there dead. March 14th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Come and meet the next Galaxy. I'm sure it will be the S4. What else, right? Uh, and there's been a lot of rumors about what the S4 will be. Galaxy S3, huge success. 30 million sales in five months. Jeez. Um, at, you know, a real credible... Uh, a real credible... Uh, competitor to the iPhone. And it's just one of a fairly broad line of products. What about the Note 5? Uh, I, my next uh, phone is going to be the HTC One. I'm really looking at that right now. It looks beautiful. You have a different phone every two months. I love that about my life. Uh, what are you rocking right now? Uh, a Note 2. Mm. It's a big note. It's a big note, but I, uh, I'm i ready for it's a, a something. huge a, clunker. Yeah, you keep that in a satchel or like a fanny pack? Yeah. Keeps it in a, <laughs> yeah, wear a fanny pack. It's, it's not that big. It fits, in your, it fits in your breast pocket. It's not that big. I like it. Or, or a, a merch. This, this, will be a, a this will be the first time I've gone backwards. I usually go bigger and bigger. And going to the uh, You usually HTC go bigger, one, then you go smaller. Yeah, it goes and, and comes and goes. Yeah. With my age, it gets smaller faster. Well, but uh, the uh, the new one is 4.8 inches, so that's the one I'm gonna go with. Huh? <laughs> uh, don't you gotta love this? The the judge in the UK who told Sam who told Apple you must apologize to Samsung for implying that they copied you has now taken they a did job. Copy him. No, no, you, but in the UK, Samsung won. Okay, and he still copied them. The judge ordered Apple to publish a notice on its website saying the Galaxy Tab did not copy the registered design for the iPad. He has now been hired by Samsung as a patent expert. <laughs> I guess it's cheaper than hiring him as an expert witness I time this, and time again. I thought this only happened in the U.S. Um, that's pretty bad. Uh, Motorola also hired Guy Kawasaki as a consultant I saw that. this past Guy's week. Got a, got a, Guy hasn't had a Guy's job a in ages. What's it? He's been writing mm -hmm. lots of books though. He's he's been big on ebooks. He wrote a, a book called Ego about uh, ebooks, how to make money in ebooks. Um, say, didn't he write buy a, how, my book? How how to use Google Plus? He wrote a book something? on Google Plus, which was an ebook, and that opened his eyes to the idea of making money in ebooks. So then he wrote an ebook about making money in ebooks. <laughs> Right. Which is usually what happens. And the next book is about how he made money on ebooks. It's when you see those ads for, like, send me a, a dollar in an envelope now and I'll tell you how to make money in business <laughs> right. online. Right. And what it is is now you get a bunch of people to send you a dollar in an envelope. Yeah, and then you say, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah. The same way I just screwed you, you screw everybody else. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's the American <laughs> Wait, way. A what a great country. Yes, Horace, please. You just said that he was uh, he was hired by Motorola. Um at what point do you decide when you're working in that company whether you're working for Motorola or for Google? Well, that's a really good question. Google doesn't seem to really want Motorola. Uh, John, you said it was the patents. It wasn't the handsets. That's what my understanding. They did try to sell. They've been trying to sell off the the uh, set top box. I think they did set, sell off the maybe set top box business, which makes no sense if you think about it. I thought that was a real opportunity for Google. Yeah, Google wants to do a set top box apparently. Well, the the division specialized more in sort of cable boxes. Like the, but that's uh, yeah, having but deals that's, with the cable companies. But company. that was to me that was the opportunity because all these cable companies have been buying these crappy Motorola, you know, set top boxes. Maybe Google could have said, Hey, you know what? Maybe we could make this a little better, put Google T V on here. Yeah. You've they, already got a business with us, a yeah, deal with us. Had they, had they tried to put Google T V on there, all of the cable companies would have cut the deal. They would deals, have said, No, it's too expensive, yeah. we don't want it. I mean, Google's approach to T V so far has been uh, go around all of the media yeah. uh, uh, cable companies, the broadcasters, and, and guy is going to away. reinvigorate the Motorola brand. Well, maybe he can. Yeah, this would give him something to do. He's going to focus on product design, user interface, marketing, and social media. He's going to do Mr. Moto. He w they had a Moto thing, remember? Oh yeah, Moto. Hello, Moto. Hello, Moto.
That was a terrible campaign. But it the, was the worst. It, by the way, the best not, campaigns where they had the dog and all these kids. The dog that buried the phone. Remember that one? Remember seeing that? That was ad? awful. And then they did that the droid awful. thing, which scared you about your phone. Yeah, that's like, true. I don't want my phone to be a scary robot. Right. I agree. That was a uh, that was Verizon too. Actually, no, it's all that so, more Verizon. It's also Kawasaki yeah. can write another book. By the way, Kawasaki's book is not Ego. It's Ape. I apologize. I don't know why I thought it was Ego. <laughs> it's Ape. And I can't remember what that stands One time for. I, did I don't a, know why you thought it was ego. I don't <laughs> one know time, why. One time no I did a speech why. with him, and uh, he was came up to the stage after I was there, and I said to him, you know, guy, we got something in common. He says, what? I said, conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I didn't, he like didn't that get one. it. <laughs> I, uh, that was kind of funny. I stole his seat once at a conference. That's my only interaction I've had. No, I love Guy. He's a good and, friend, and, uh, and uh, he's been <laughs> on our shows many times, and I think he's fun. Um, his book is... Called author, publisher, entrepreneur. That's what Ape stands for. Oh, Ape. For. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I get it. Yeah. And it's actually, I've recommended it to uh, people. It's a good book. Why has it got a gorilla on the front? He. One of the things he says is your ebook has to have a good cover. It's an ebook. Well, that seems counterintuitive, isn't it? Yeah, because normally good covers are designed so when you're walking through the bookstore, you go, well, wow. But think about what the bookstore the book. is now. It's Amazon, right? Yeah, but. So his one of his points in Ape. Uh, which is 300 pages long, so it's not That's like a light non-trivial. What's, it's the, non -trivial. what's the font size? <laughs> it might be big. I don't know. One of the things he says uh, uh, in Ape is that it, even in an online bookstore, the cover makes a huge difference. And he actually did some testing and stuff. It makes a huge difference in sell through. Mm. You you really do need to uh, pay attention to that. Even though you would, you're right. You would. It's counterintuitive. You'd think not. Well, he's probably right. He's an expert. All right, we're gonna take a break. Only another half hour left. Thank God. This show brought to you by. Also, you got here's the other thing. Yeah. You started. You had the other show on, and it, it drained all I your energy. I think the other show drained my energy. It did. Yeah. This is a problem. You're working yourself to death. I'm working myself to death. Yeah. You're gonna have to pull back, pull back, delegate. Or I'll just have this little guy do uh, mm -hmm. some of the show. Mm -hmm. The show brought to you by Go to Assist. Are you in IT? No, you're not. But uh, I'm talking to the audience at home. Are you in IT? Uh, do you have to support uh, computers, uh, maybe software? Go to Assist is a must-have for the IT professional. Visit gotoassist.com. You can learn all about it. Uh, it's from Citrix. Uh, so you know, of course, it's well-designed. Uh, you probably have used the remote access module. In fact, for the last 10 years, go to assist remote access has been the number one choice for IT professionals for remote access. It's it's huge. But they've recently added new features that make this even more valuable. They've added a module called uh, remote monitoring that lets you track everything in your customer's network. This is how you're going to turn into a managed service provider. Somebody who can really deliver on support. So you, you, you install the crawler on your on your client's network here. And it will go out. It'll find every bit of hardware and software. And then you set up the dashboards to track performance, network performance, even things like how much hard drive space is left, toner, cartridge, everything. They have some pre-customized dashboards, but you can also build your own. And you can get alerts from instant messenger, email, text. Uh, very powerful stuff. Then you go in with remote access and fix it. And, of course, you can track the problems with their new service desk module. Easy to uh, easily manage and track and resolve issues. You've got change, release, and configuration management. Uh, your, your customers will use this too with a, a beautiful branded self-service uh, portal. It's very nice stuff. So let me get you to try this. If you visit gotoassist.com, click the Try It Free button, and use our offer code TWIT, T-W-I-T, you've got 30 days of Go to Assist. All three, do, they're going to ask you which modules little pro tip click all three it's free and i think you'll find uses for all three of them they really really go hand in hand go to assist.com use the promo code twit we love citrix and we thank them for their support of go to assist our guests are studio of asimco.com you just had your uh, uh conference in san francisco right it's over yeah we did oh, um I just january 30. are you gonna do another one soon Yes, um, no later than six months, I think, and uh, we're going to do it in London. Oh, how nice. How fun. So it went well. Yeah, well, very well. We were uh, we were hosted by IBM. We were, it was in their uh, 
Watson uh, Research Center. Uh, no, sorry, fun. not Watson. Uh, Almaden uh, Research Center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and it was great, great venue, great great people. Uh, we just talked a lot about the the history of Silicon Valley, the history of California, and the history of um, the Asian tigers, and whether you know the the the, the frontier of innovation is moving east um, or west, I should say. Well, back east, if you will. Wait, wait a minute, um, back east. Okay, to the east. <laughs> well, the far east, the far right, east. Right. Um, so the uh, that's that's one of the one of the themes we we, we wanted to explore. Did Watson cook you any food? He's Here's cooking now. Oh, yeah. I love so, that. So this is the same computer that won won the Jeopardy. Yep. Now he's uh, crunching culinary data and coming up with meal recipes. That is. To me, that would be a challenging thing for a computer to do. Uh, if a computer could cook, could be a... So he's not obviously cooking. No, he's, he doesn't He's have making hands. recipes that others will cook? Yes. New recipes. Um, well, so Example, for, please. IBM, for IBM's investor meeting that just happened on Friday, uh, Watson came up with Spanish almond crescents, Australian oh, grilled asparagus, oh, and veal good. croquettes. Wow, that sounds really good. Now, these aren't others' recipes. These are Watson created. Watson came up with this after yeah, crunching a lot never... of data. Uh, that seems to be a, a good uh, AI challenge. No. Chemical compounds yeah, it is, it can't work. and human preferences. Can't work. What if Because when you're creating recipes, you're tasting stuff, and you're, you're making combinations in your head in such a way that a computer can't possibly do, because it's never tasted anything. So the, the real problem with this, the computer doesn't care. If it tastes good. Yeah, but good. what if it could get data that said, okay, this, that uh, uh, everybody said this, this tastes good. Yeah, like and these it, ingredients taste good. So uh, for the Spanish almond crescents, Watson wanted something that combines saffron, pepper, honey, oh. and chocolate. Oh. oh. No, that sounds good. Oh. That sounds El Bulli good. No, it doesn't. <laughs> sounds horrible. That's what he does. No, he no. finds five completely disparate well, ingredients. Well, yeah, but he's also working on trying to fool you. You know, kind of trick you into like he's ever said that his food is good. He's just as interesting. <laughs> Michelin gave him three stars. That sounds like he's good. No, the food, the restaurant's fantastic. I mean, they have like three staff members for every guest. I mean, it's closed now. Have you been to? He was losing. No, I missed out. <sighs> he got. He ended up closing the place because they were losing so much money that nobody could afford to keep that, it. Which open. is interesting because they were getting a million reservation requests a year for eight thousand slots. How could you lose money? He was losing money because he really couldn't charge what, it, what the food was worth. That's the problem, right? Yeah, it's already costing you thousands of dollars. You had to pay, like, to make money, you'd have to charge 10 grand a, a meal, you know, kind of thing. He should have. He should have. He should have. Then he wouldn't maybe get a million reservation requests. Or build a bigger restaurant. Yeah. I'm sad that I didn't get to. I, I would have liked to have gone. I know two people have been. And? I say it's the most interesting dining experience they've ever had, but the food wasn't necessarily that good. It was interesting. Not good, but interesting. It was in Madrid? No, it was in the Costa Brava in the southern part, of, or the over by Barcelona. So so where did uh, Adria go? I mean, is he going to... He's retired. Else? He retired. Oh, no, way. he's doing... Uh, no, this is hilarious. I think he's working for Coke or Pepsi. <laughs> no, seriously. What he should do Sorry is go to work eating. for IBM. I th I really like this idea that a computer. I think oh. this is. Why I think they're smart like to this? do this. They Watson that's first. First they they beat the world chess champion with Deep Blue, and then they say, okay, now that's too. That's calc. It's all calculation. So chess isn't a good challenge because it's calculation. So now they're trying to say what we what 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 is the difference between calculation and thinking? And they go to Jeopardy, but it's still very fact based. But I that think, was a, that was a scam and a fraud. That what? Jeopardy thing. It's a timing. You they think the it hit the button advance. faster. And they got the questions in advance? Yeah, because it needed some time to crunch everything, so they give it a little the extra time. The whole thing time. was ridiculous. Oh, that's not right. But there's a thought do about... Do you think Alex Trebek had anything to do with that? <laughs> there's a thought that computers with humans, in other words, a it's computer and a human, could beat Deep Blue if they worked in, in tandem. Well, sure. A now, computer I plus think... a human is better than a computer alone. Right, and I'm thinking maybe well, with the recipe thing, it might be better if you had a real chef. That's what I'm saying. He working sh with the computer, Mr. El Bulli should have gone there. Well, he's working for Coke or Pepsi now, doing something crazy, making snack food. I think seriously, <laughs> it's like ratatouille. <laughs> ratatouille.
<laughs> Get back to Pixar. <laughs> Uh, so the uh, creative director, former creative director at uh, Shia Day, Ken Seagal, worked with uh, Jobs 14 years. He was like his guy. He put the I in the iMac. That's from, that shit. That's like on his on his. Car. I put the I in iMac. So um, he had to. He uh, he's the guy who did the Think Different campaign. Um, so they asked him uh, about Apple's ads. Currently. He said, Apple's advertising history is as famous as its products, but something has changed. While you can still argue that Macs and iDevices have a ton of appeal, you can't argue that Apple is still untouchable when it comes to advertising. The fact it is it is being touched often and effectively by none other than Samsung. And I'd agree. I think the Samsung ads, I'm not sure about the unicorn Riot. No, uh, and they've been playing that a little too much too. Yeah. The uh, sa Samsung Safe, the Enterprise, Samsung Enterprise. Well, that's what ads. they're pushing, right? Yeah, I didn't see this commercial. The Unicorn, uh, unicorn, unicorn game. I think it's a series of ads too. It's, it's a not long all series one. of ads. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the the Super Bowl ad was a little weird, where they brought in a oh, yeah, couple the, of actors, yeah, and right. it was a little strange. But I loved the ads of the people waiting in line, and then mom and dad show up. <laughs> I mean, you put those against the Siri ads with Zoe Deschanel oh, terrible. and uh, 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 Martin Scorsese. Not Those aren't very good. No, not at all. Plus, and I think Seagal mentions this as well, it's clear uh, Samsung's way outspending Apple. You see those ads. In fact, that may be the one flaw. You see those ads everywhere all the time. Yeah, and, and Samsung is spending internationally, whereas Apple tends to focus right. on certain markets with its advertising. Yeah, Samsung is, is definitely outspending. He says, Apple is feeling a bit like Obama after his first debate with Romney. It deeply believes in its this? ideas. It just needs to express them more forcefully. <laughs> this is guy Norman Mailer? What's I don't the deal? know. He's probably trying to, trying to be, you know, he's retired. Oh, this, you know, Philip. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I, but uh, you know, I can't disagree with him. Um, and now it's Samsung. Talk about copying. They're doing the uh, the new the new wallet app looks just like Passbook. It even has a similar icon. It seems odd. This is they announced this at Mobile World Congress. Um, it's called Samsung Wallet, which is the same name as the Windows Phone Eight uh, and Google. Wallet. Google calls theirs Google Wallet. Wallet, right? Actually, I guess Wallet. You can't trademark Wallet. Maybe. Mm. Um, there's the uh, two icons. They're on the left, Apple's passbook icon. On the right, Samsung's wallet. Both of them have tickets in a pouch. Right? Yeah. I did, you know, they these guys have... I don't understand why they can't... Why can't we just get along? Be a little more creative. It does seem as if Samsung... Uh, but is that Samsung or Android? That's Samsung. Samsung. Okay. So they did this themselves. Yeah, for, for Samsung phones. You know, that's the big thing now is to is to really make the distinction between Andro a generic Android, which you've got on your Google Right. Uh, and phone. the great thing about this, by the way, says it says Google on the back. It always gets upgraded immediately. That's not true, by I, the way. I got 4.2.2 on here. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's not a it's guarantee. 4.2.2. <laughs> should be in one of those ads. Um. I like what Tweetbot did, Tapbots, which makes the Tweetbot app, which is a kind of an expensive app on the uh, Macintosh platform. I think it's um, twenty, was it like twenty bucks, twenty yeah. bucks, something like that. Uh, when, if you pirate it, um, and and this is an issue if you're a Twitter client because uh, Twitter only gives you a hundred thousand tokens or twice what you have already got signed up. So this in Tweetbot's case, it probably have far more than a hundred thousand tokens because they have been around for a while. So. Um, I don't know how they know if you're pirated, but apparently if you pirate it, then when you first sign up, they suggest as your first as your first tweet, <laughs> I've been demoing a pirated copy of Tweetbot and really like it, so I'm going to buy a copy. The funny they thing is... They make you tweet this? They don't make you tweet it. They just, you know how you get, when you first get it, it's your first tweet. Um, they suggest it. You could uh, cancel, but apparently... It's like hello world. Yeah, but apparently people, pirates are not the brightest, maybe. Because if you do a search for I've been demoing a pirated copy of Tweetbot, you get a, you get a lot of tweets. <laughs> <laughs> they just go, yeah, they're all sure. from Arabs. Okay, well, no, this is this is well. <laughs> no, one look, of the things you are all there's Arabs. a lot of Arabic, yeah, but it's not just Arabic. But this is one of the things you realize now with Twitter is a f absolutely global phenomenon. You see non uh, well, yeah. non Western China. characters. Yeah, China, there's China. Uh, Japan. 
Uh, there's some more. Remember Arabic. the original days of tw Twitter when there was uh, when that you could click at one of these little icons and it would give you the, all the feeds coming in at all the time. Yeah, it's just changed a lot. And it would oh, yeah. be flying global by. Feed. Yes. Yes. Global feed. Just imagine. I think App.net still has that. I think yeah, they can. Yeah. yeah. By the way, they're doing a free version of App.net. Limited okay. number of tweets or whatever you call those apps. What do they? They have a name for what they call App.net uh, postings. It's not very memorable, obviously. <laughs> I've been demoing a pirated copy of TweetBot, and I really like it. <laughs> it's, look at all of these. It's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, this thing jumped the shark. That is brilliant. Shark. Jumped the shark. No, I just think that's a great way to, just a great way to shame people uh, who have been stealing your product. What am I doing? Oh, I keep doing the wrong key. I've been opening a million tabs. Just poke at it. El bully. Poke, poke, poke. There you go. Look at that. It's not doing anything. And every time you poke, the whole thing shakes. You don't find that annoying? That's why they have that kickstand on the surface, because it won't shake. This is like shakes. <laughs> I'm shaking my laptop. It's terrible. Look, it just went, it just crashed. Exp no, it just oh, oh, went to a new page. Internet Explorer 10 now available on Windows 7. Aren't you excited? Oh, let me get Quick, a pen. Quick, run and download down. that. I got to get it when I get home. Yeah. Improved JavaScript performance and a focus on battery life for mobile PCs. I don't know why that... You should yeah, what? well, how much battery life does a browser, browser chew up? I don't know. Um, eh, is Twitter worth $10 billion? Nah. No. That's an easy one. Yeah, we're done. Just say no. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. Who thinks Twitter's worth ten? Well, uh, BlackRock. BlackRock? Just, BlackRock Group just put in a big investment giving them a uh, private market. It's not public. Private market valuation of... Nine billion dollars. Wall Street Journal's Dennis Berman. Are those Berman. the guys who are the mercenaries in Iraq? Oh, black water. I see. That's right. Rock beats water. Um, I guess if somebody's water willing to give rock. you, I, I get, yeah, right. Actually, water should be rock. Yeah, but water's not in that game. You know, it's scissors, papers, and rocks. Uh, no water. You know, there's a professional league of that game. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you had really good, if you were really good at sensing, like micro changes yeah. in in, in yeah. facial you expressions, see the bluffer things, you and see the bluff, you could yeah. probably see what's. You could probably be very good at that. Mm. I wonder if Watson could do that. Maybe Watson should forget chess, <laughs> rock paper scissors. Okay, onward. You your job, John, but you went and ate an orange instead. Was to find a big, uh, exciting. So I go. How about you? I got one. Go ahead. You were going to say something. Else. No, I'm not going to say anything. Did you? Did somebody tell you that I was wearing a blue plaid shirt? Is that why you're this wearing is, a blue plaid this shirt? This is not blue. It's blue-ish. I actually have a, I have a blue shirt, one just almost like that one. I almost wore. I thought, I thought you were bluish. It just there's something about you. Marissa Meyer says, if you're working from home, screw you. Oh, yeah. You got to come back to the yeah, office. I wrote a column about this. I would market too. Watch? Is this bizarre? Yeah, market watch. I think it was in PC Man. This is bizarre. Uh, what is the story here? I I have a theory. This is some. This was a rare act from Marissa of um, unmediated peak. That normally I would think that she would get frustrated, get angry, and then go. But I'm a CEO, and I'm gonna. I'm going to you handle this was... more appropriately. I think she got pissed off. About what? About people working from home and, and not doing anything. Oh, well, they got people in the office not doing anything. <laughs> Why doesn't she deal with that? And I think she, but I think she got some metrics. Somebody said, hey, by the way, Marissa, we got 53 oh, somebody, customer service somebody's agents with working at home. Looked and, at uh, VPN data to yeah. see how often. And they're, they're, and they're actually on Facebook. Doing any work. And she got pissed off and wrote a memo saying, you can't work from home anymore. When everybody knows that working from home is a more productive way to work, it's been studied to death, and just because they're, these people aren't doing their job when by working from home is not... Well, just fire people who are not doing a good job. Yeah, no, I mean, she's, and, and she's, she's... It's a strange thing, and I, I just don't... I don't think it's a big deal in the sense that I think it's obviously a mistake, and they're, you know, they're going to change their mind, but it's, it shows a, a, an unusual crack in the facade, I think. I think she just got pissed. I don't Will think... Will they be punching, punching clocks now? Yeah, what's next? Yeah, they should have a big thing of time cards. <laughs> Ching, and put it in the little rack. And then the big scandal will be the guy who punches in your time card. Oh, I hate it when that happens. No, that's what you want. The, the guy comes yeah. in before Cover you for do. Me. He yeah. covers for you by punching, in you, punching you in, and then off you go. You stay at home. What do they call that when you, um, uh, you 
ride on somebody when they open the door with their card key and you ride in after them? Yeah, it's called riding in after like, them. Uh, tailgating? Tailgating. There must be a name for it's it. Probably. Tailgarding. Drafting. Drafting. <laughs> it's the same it's idea. It's a Mario Kart term. Well, it's kind of... Tailgating. It's yeah. called tailgating. Yeah, that's what everyone says. Uh, um, one of the bits of irony from the story was uh, that Marissa Mayer had built uh, or had had built a nursery in her office. Yeah, she can work baby. from the. She doesn't have yeah. to work from home. She's got a nursery with a, in her an, office and probably a nanny and a couple with and it. a nanny's working around the clock. Yeah, well, she's a billionaire. She's got multiple residences. She doesn't care that people really can't afford to live in Silicon Valley. She's an elitist. Some people. Th there was some speculation that this would save money because those people would quit. Well, they probably will. Well, a lot of them apparently were hired with the uh, with the idea that you could, you don't have to come in. But they may be coders, and, and now they they're saying you got to move to San Jose and hang out here. Yeah, yeah. no, they I'd figured quit. they're going to quit. We won't have to pay uh, unemployment. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, Sunnyvale Jeez. is not the most ideal oh. commute for somebody living in San Francisco or somebody or, living in the or North or Bay, or the East Bay. No, it's terrible. People all over the place, right? Time Warner Cable says. You know, this Google gigabit thing, nobody really wants that. We have we have determined there is no consumer demand for gigabit either. Yeah, idiots. <laughs> <laughs> we attend, you know, we can do one, hey, that one makes megabit it so. per second is good that enough. That makes it so. Uh, we're in the business, says Time Warner, of delivering what customers want, and they and then they we've don't asked want them, speed. They the last thing they'd want. All they're doing is they're, they're defining their own customers as as out and out idiots. <laughs> Our customers don't want it because they're stupid. Weird That's the, what he's saying. I don't this know. is uh, Time Warner's chief cable, uh, Time Warner Cable's chief financial officer, Irina Steves. We're in the business of delivering what customers want and stay a little ahead of what they think we think they'll want, but we just don't see the need of delivering gigabit to consumers. Yeah. I mean, it's, it does depend on the price. Um, yeah, at, at $1,000 a month, they're probably right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> but, but how much does Google that's gigabit? What, by the way, that's probably what they asked the question. That's how probably if, how they placed it. Yes, of course. Yeah. If you, would you pay $10,000 a month for gigabit <laughs> Ethernet? No. And anyone says, no, our customers don't want it. They don't it. want it. Yeah. We asked them. Comcast charges, uh, or at least when the uh, 100 megabit per second service came out, they were charging $105 a month. For that, sir, who's going to pay that? Right, at, for but home Google internet? Gigabit, I think, is really like thirty-five. It's cheap, right? Is anybody in uh, watching this living seventy dollars? Says Jeff, seventy bucks. So, yeah, for seventy a bucks now, a month. So, I I ask you, Time Warner customers, would you pay seventy dollars a month for Gigabit? By the way, it's not just Gigabit down; it's Gigabit up. I'd take it, and I would pay a hundred bucks easy. I'd, I'd pay 100 bucks. Well, somebody said on the chat room said they'd pay 300 I, yeah. Everybody in the chat room saying yes for 70 bucks. Of course you want it. Yeah, what, Google, I'm paying Google, 70 now for 15 right. and 15 three. In 15, Kansas 15, City, Google at, you know said you can't have this unless everybody in your neighborhood or some, some percentage, 80% of the people in your neighborhood sign up. And it was universally subscribed to. Apparently, the people in Kansas City wanted it. Everybody wants it. It's, I love it. That's a that's a that's a good business model. Just make up what your customers want if you don't want to give it to us. Uh, we're going to take a break, come back with more, and then we'll find out why Square was slapped with a cease and desist by the state of Illinois. Square? Square. You know the charge card thing, Square? Charge with Square? Yeah, that little yeah. thing. State of Illinois didn't like it. Why, you didn't get a piece of the action? Probably. That corrupt state I'm of Illinois? Guessing, That's what I'm you're guessing telling me? it would have something to do with that. Mm. Our show today brought to you by audible.com, audio books. The best audiobook uh, distributor in the world, over 100,000 choices. Uh, and if you go to audible.com, you can get one free right now. <laughs> Are you making funny sounds <laughs> with your lips? What is going on here? This is good. I typed in, uh, in audible.xom and Google said, oh, you mean audible.com. That's exactly what I did. You didn't even spell audible right. I, I spelled the whole thing wrong and Google knew. 100,000 plus titles, uh, an amazing uh, deal, and what great books. I am such a fan of uh, audible.com. Let me log into my Audible account. I'm, uh, you know, I noticed a lot of the books they recommend on the front page are books that we've recommended, like Life of Pi, which was one of my, my favorite audio books. In fact, I don't want to see the movie. It was such an experience. I loved it so much. They've redesigned, by the way, the Audible uh, page. So if you're an Audible customer and you haven't been to the new web page, I think you're going to like it. It's cleaner. See how I can see two credits available in big letters. And, mm. um, 
What a great salt, sugar, fat, how the food giants hooked us by Michael Moss. I got to read that. The Vatican Diaries. Ooh, a look behind the scenes at the power, personalities, and politics of the heart of the Catholic Church. That'd be good. Right now, it's timely. What are you looking at? You're not a Catholic. No, but I think it's fat. Don't you think it's fascinating? The mid, the, it's just mid, it's medieval. The middle, the, I, you know, I can't, I can't get enough. I'll get that one and listen to it. Would you do that for me? How about this one? It's just right for you. Strong hot winds. <laughs> Irish, Irish Joe Hansen. Really? It's almost as if it's they kind of knew. A cheap shot. <laughs> I was beneath you. It is, it is, but I couldn't resist. When I saw the book, I said, "That's that's John's." Well, here's the thing: you're going to choose two books, so you could make you could make that one of your books, and then the nah. mm -hmm. strong hot winds. It's probably a romance novel. Let me let me just read the description. Four years ago, after Corey Brandel's passionate affair with Sheik Damon El Karim ended, she gave birth to his son and. Kept it a secret from the sheik. Huh. When Damon finds out the truth, he kidnaps the boy and takes him across the world to his desert kingdom, knowing that Corey will follow. This sounds good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Until now, Corey never understood Damon's loneliness. But is she strong enough to give him the enduring love he needs? Or carnal innocence? By Nora Roberts. Oh, yeah, Nora Roberts. I like Nora Roberts. She's a moneymaker. She's a moneymaker. I, I don't care much for her. Yeah. Well, The Hunger Games. What about them? Good book. Really, you think so? I haven't read it, but it's on my list. I actually downloaded it. I just haven't listened to it yet. Mm. Um, what I'm listening to now, you know, you all know because I've talked about it, because it's a really, really long uh, book is Patrick Rothfuss's Name of the... Well, I first listened to The Name of the Wind, now listening to book two of the King Chronicles. Did you finish that yet, Chad? Haven't finished. It's long. Yeah, I'm on... I, I'm like on chapter like 27. I know, there's a lot of chapters. And I'm, I'm 41. Like, yeah, I'm not even like a fourth through. I know. But that's my favorite type of book. Such you just get book. lost in it. You do. Or how about this? Duct Tape Parenting, a less is more approach to raising respectful, responsible, and resilient kids. God, I hope it doesn't involve duct tape. Yeah, no, it, it totally involves duct tape. I, I know about this book. It's mostly about how to tie the kids down. No. Yeah. And and then you put them in a chair, and then you put the chair in a closet. <laughs> I'm t I, I don't recommend this book for anybody. No, I don't think it's a good idea. Actually, I don't think that's what it's about. Anyway. I could be wrong. Audible Here's the deal. You want to get a couple of books for free, audible.com slash twit2. You'll sign up for the Platinum account. That's two books a month subscription. First month is free. First two books are free. Cancel any time in the first month. Pay nothing. But those books are yours forever. You get to keep them forever. And the new Audible apps, uh, I have the Audible app now on Windows 8. It's really great. Windows phone, iPhone, uh, Android phone. Uh, they, they've just updated the apps to a clean, slick look to match the web page. Mm. They're doing nice stuff. Audible.com slash twit2. Your first book is free. They're looking like Windows 8. It Yeah, it has kind of a... Well, it's just clean. It is a little Windows 80, isn't it? Yeah, totally. It's clean. So these are my next uh, three books. I've already already got them in the, in the uh, cart. Jerry Pornell's The Gripping Hand. <laughs> That's also a child-rearing uh, book, I believe. I thought it was about something else. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's not how not to have children. That's probably what yeah, it is. Yeah, that's what it yeah. is, yeah. It's Audible com slash twit2. All right, we're going to wrap this up. A couple of uh, quick stories. Have I done... I've, I've done Tom's uh, The Week Ahead. I've done the promo. That's really... It really Maybe it, you do Tom again. It will reset I the show. Maybe I could reset should it. should start over. <sighs> yeah, you wouldn't mind if I started the whole thing, would you, over again? Uh, Square has been slapped with a cease and desist order by the Illinois State Department of Financial Regulation. Uh, the Transmitters of Money Act. No person may engage in this state in the business of selling or issuing payment instruments, transmitting money or exchanging for compensation, payment instruments, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, without first obtaining a license. What does that got to do with Bitcoin? Under this act. Should we? Somebody sent me a Twitter that said we should accept Bitcoin as a payment. We have the same harassing people doing that to our show. <laughs> the Bitcoin is now at the highest value it's yeah, been 33 ever. Thirty-three bucks or so. Yeah, but you can't really do. You can't. Well, you can buy. You can buy pizzas with Bitcoin. There's a, there's Where, a website. Yeah, there's a pizza in Wisconsin. No, I think it's Domino's. Oh, great. <laughs> 
No, well, it's a, it's a, it's a portal. Toys, you won't get the it's pizza. It's a portal to right. It's a portal to pizza. It's a pizza portal. It's a pizza portal. What would so um pizza so um, so you press uh, takes Bitcoin subscriptions. Really, you can pay for subscriptions. With subscription Bitcoin. to what? To WordPress. Host what do you mean? What subscription to WordPress? Host it for more space and. Sometimes WordPress takes money. Here. Pizzaforcoins.com. You want to say hi to Mimi? Hi, Mimi. How are you? <laughs> I didn't turn her on yet. Here. Hi, Mimi. It's Leo. John said he just turned you on. <laughs> That's John's wife. Yeah. I don't know why she's calling me while I'm Mimi, doing the show. Mimi, John's on the air right now. Don't don't bother us. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's apologizing profusely. She's hanging up. <laughs> She just hung I up. No, I love so Mimi. Sorry. Your wife is an awesome person, and she doesn't get enough credit. Okay. A new website <laughs> dev devoted to your hunger needs, but only if you're in the mood to pizza. Going back to the fa infamous 10,000 Bitcoin for pizza back in 2010, a system for ordering pizzas with your Bitcoin. You choose your pizza company. You can get Papa John's. I bet he likes that. Pizza Hut <laughs> or Domino's. Hmm. I don't have any Bitcoin, or I'd try it. This is not a quality product. <laughs> is Ch Chad, are we missing the boat? Should we be accepting Bitcoin? Uh, well, I was thinking about it the other day, and, like... I don't know what I'd do with it. <laughs> well, I mean, you you have to use it just like a credit card, because you have a credit card number, and that's that could be associated it's like a, a Bitcoin. number, by the way. It's the yeah, because it's, number. it's crypto, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, unless if everyone takes it, then it so it's it's almost like the the social network problem where where everyone yeah. has to be on it, otherwise right. it, it's not useful. But it's not useful until everyone's on it. It's but just a matter you, of time before the state of Illinois sues the pants out. Of you it. guys have the right audience for it, though. Oh no, there I'm sure there's Bitcoin yeah. miners okay, out there. Okay, right how many people in the Bitcoins. audience use Bitcoin? Ah. Hey, there's a guy. Where are you from, sir? Take one of the discs. He's from San Francisco. Notorious. How many bitcoins do you currently bitcoin own? Hangout. <laughs> Ooh, he must have a lot. Ooh, he's got a big. He's bitcoin. got a stash of bitcoins. Did they bitcoins. solve the? Because there was a problem with people stealing bitcoins. They've solved that uh, that issue, right? He says you can easily steal. Oh, bitcoins. well, that's no good. <laughs> uh, huh. Yeah. Okay. It's not right. Horace, what what are you writing about for your next uh, blog post on asimco.com? What's a hot? What's hot for you right now? Um, I'm looking at the uh, I, iTunes economy. Um, I think the uh, the fact that Apple switched their reporting about what used to be called a music uh, music business, uh, it's now called iTunes, and they folded in the um, uh, the Apple software division because that. Apple software now is sold through the iTunes store anyway, or the Mac App Store. For the longest time, Apple said, oh, this is a loss leader. We don't make any money on this. It's just a way to add value to the Apple platform. They've gone beyond that, haven't they? Well, my, 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 my reckoning, I mean, they reported about $13 billion in revenue. So um, some of that is not, uh, I mean, some of their gross income is not reported because it's actually on the agency model. But I think that they're upwards of $15 billion a year now. Uh, in terms of transaction value going through the iTunes store. And that is a significant number that we should be looking at more closely and understanding where the costs are. Because if, if indeed they're, they're collecting 30% of all the transactional value, then um, and if they're breaking even on that, then you're looking at a, at a cost structure in, you know, five to $7 billion dollars. So uh, that that is uh, that is significant amount of money that is going out to something um, internal to Apple. Now, I think they are making money, so I don't think it's all going into the server farms. But it's still a question um, from a competitive point of view: is this the is this something that uh, an alternative uh, uh, you know uh, uh, entrant or or a contender for this uh, for for being a, a, an ecosystem provider? Um, are they looking at the same investment level needed, uh, billions of dollars needed? To it'd be, it'd be reasonable for Apple to hide that information because that's uh, that's the kind of thing. Indeed, it, it's, it's, it's like, a lot of uh, money that's in there, and if it's cheap to do, yeah, yeah, it's 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 like Google's own. Uh, you know, Google doesn't report a lot of its costs either, so we don't really know what it costs to run Google. But uh, but it is interesting to. To think about also, you know, because we're down to probably three major players, Google, Amazon, and, 
in right. Apple or in the content business today or content distribution. And what that's going to do to, to the future of not just uh, apps and, and music, but, you know, increasingly the TV space is going to be folded into this. So there's, there's a lot of uh, interesting thing also is Eddie Q that runs this business. I mean, he has to deal with five different industries. Um, he has to deal with people coming from book publishing to music publishing, music, I should say music labels, uh, app developers, um, and they all have different expectations, different ways of looking at the world and what their value add is. And so somehow it all has to be re, um, uh, reperp sort of resold through through this uh, through this uh, uh, channel that that is iTunes. So I'm very interested in looking at the uh, the economics of it, the competitive um, the, the competitive structure. Uh, how easy is it to enter into this? How easy is it to uh, compete? And uh, the data is beginning to come together. And that's the interesting thing. You, you, you can start to back out the, uh, the, the crucial figures that will give us uh, some answers, hopefully. So I'll be writing more about that. Interesting. Use your best guess that, that it's somewhat profitable, wildly profitable. It's certainly not a break-even business anymore. No, but I, I think that they're mostly going to be profitable from software, from their own software. So we have, uh -huh. uh, my expectation is they're running at about 17% operating margin. So 15 to 17 percent on on 17 billion is is a lot of money. I think they're going to go over 20 actually in, in 2013. Mm. So um, yeah, it's it's profitable, but not on the on the as a margin. Uh, we're not looking at anything near the hardware businesses right. they have, but it is certainly above zero. And um, and also the the whole business is growing at a solid 30 percent. Um, and that is uh, that is something you can try to extrapolate, and, and it starts to get, look really, really interesting. If you wanted to take over from Apple, though, you know, I mean, they've been so successful at building this closed ecosystem. Uh, it would be it's more than just you know the issue of can we make money at it. It's it's how do we get in there? How do we get a wedge, a foot in the door? Well, it's it's. I mean, I think first of all, this is selling other people's content, so it's not a, it's not about open or not. I think um, Google and Amazon are doing similar things in terms of uh, offering, uh, uh, you know, a, a palette or or, or uh, you know a portfolio of, of media types. I think the uh, the, the interesting thing is whether. Um, whether the app model, which is actually one of the biggest chunks, it's about 15 billion downloads per in 2012, um, whether that app business is going to go more web-based, right? I mean, that's that's the big question. But right now, developers are still finding it lucrative to do to do native code, which means, uh, you know, the, the, the closed model, if you will. Um, and and certainly Google is uh, is right in there. Um, Amazon is in, is as well. Um, maybe maybe Samsung will get into this game. I think from a competitive point of view, that's really the question. If you're as big as Samsung is now, think about the fact that they make more profits from from uh, Galaxy than Google does for all of its business right. today. Um, Samsung is a bigger player than Google. Period. And so the question is for Samsung. What's next? Because they've said, you know, hardware commoditizes. They know that. They've said they've done it to others. Yeah, so, so, so how, you know, the Chinese are coming and uh, Huawei and, and then ZTE are both gunning for that same spot that Samsung has today. So they have to become an ecosystem player. And it's not just about forking Android. They have to attract developers. They have to attract media companies. And they would have to be looking at these n numbers about, you know, what does it take where do you make the investments? The lead times involved. I mean, iTunes is is you know it's been around since two thousand and four. Well, and so, many have taken a run at it. You look at Sony, which has taken many runs at iTunes and never succeeded. And they even own a record company. Exactly. I mean, here you, you know you you would have thought Sony, with all of its consumer electronics uh, legacy, could make a, a dent in there, but they they weren't able to. So, and Sony, by the way, was also disrupted by by Samsung, That's you know, right. the TV That's business. Right. Yep. So, so it's it's really an open question, I think, and I'm not sure again what the answer might be, but I think that that the first step is to understand what's going on, and, and there isn't enough scrutiny right now of the iTunes business as a business. I think it's still seen as, you know, like you said. A break-even thing that sustains the the uh, sustains the uh, the hardware business, and Amazon is seen as sort of being actually 
uh, very uh, clever and innovative in terms of giving its hardware away so that it right. can make no no margin on, on content sales. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure what the wisdom of that is, but the point is that Apple is doing that to some degree here with, uh, with its TV business. It's giving away the Apple TV. Um, essentially, it's, at, it's not a high margin product while it's actually trying to generate um, uh, content sales as well. So there's, there's sort of like, um, I, I think of Apple TV as sort of Apple's uh, Kindle. Yeah, they, I think it's such disinformation when they say it's our hobby. <laughs> you re whenever Apple says something like that, don't look over here. No, this is, there's no profit in the iTunes. The uh, Apple TV is just a hobby. That's the first place you should look. That's like, Tim, that's a big red flag. Yeah. Tim Cook has started to change the messaging on that a little bit, yeah. saying, you know, we're we're going to keep pulling yeah. the strings. We think that there's something here. But, I mean, you you just look at their performance with the Apple TV. They have obviously haven't cracked it yet. Right. Um, I mean, they're selling well by, by many standards within. I mean, it's the leader in that tiny uh, over-the-top set-top box market. I think they're sandbagging the Apple TV. Ah. I don't think so. I think they are, because I think they've held back on the one thing that really would put it over the top, which is apps. And they're holding on to that. And I feel like they're they're, they're keeping it a so hobby. So what are they doing? They're, they're just going to they're keep ready to upgrading pull the it and leaking No, they're going to pull the trigger. But they but they but I think, I, I just have a feeling they've got a, yeah, a the, long-term plan. The trigger plan. is going to be cancel it. By the way, just as a side note. Yes, you like my watch. I you see. have a watch here. Yes. That's, that's a $10,000 watch. No, it's not. All right. It's a little less than that. It's a nice watch, though, isn't it? You know, it's what I found out big and clunky. Yeah, it's really big, and I bought it because it was big. Because I thought uh, my phone and you, my watch should be equal size. And what else? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I found out that the inside of this is uh, commoditized. That the works are based on what is effectively like a CPU yeah. that is sold to many watch manufacturers. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that interesting? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> We've got to thank everybody for being here, especially you, Horace Eddie. You put up with us for a long, long time. Where are you located? Well, my, my I have a home in Finland. I'm actually ah. right now in, in, in Boston, however. Oh, good. All right. I was worried you were in Finland, and I thought, oh, my God, it's like you're four in the morning. You're keeping the guy up all night. The northern lights are going, and you're missing them. But, no, Boston, <laughs> nothing. Nothing's going on. Nothing going on. Nothing going on. Thank you very much, Horace. Really appreciate my it. My pleasure. We're at ASYMCO.com, certainly the place you should go. Uh, and we also uh, encourage people to listen to your podcast on 5 by 5 which is called? The Critical Path. The Critical Path. And really is fascinating. Really good stuff. Both the writing on InSimco and the show are great. 5 by 5tv The Critical Path. Thank you very much, Mark Millian, for joining us from Bloomberg Business Week. What are you working on this week? Uh, well, I just got back from vacation, so oh, I don't have a whole lot going rested, on right now. But relaxed. I'm catching up on uh, the you past go? week. Um, Hawaii to Kauai. Nice. Very nice. It was awesome. Yeah. Yep. That's why you're not wearing any shoes. Yep. Nope. Got the... Very uh, relaxed. Got the sandals. No. <laughs> <laughs> John C. Dvorak, nice to see you once again. Tomorrow, you and me, we're going to be Statler and Waldorf to the radio industry. Yeah. We're going to blow their minds. Blow I hate radio. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna say. It's I know what we're gonna say. Yeah, good. Uh, not really. No, because you go up. You know there, why? Analyze. This is gonna be ad libbed, but it's not gonna be ad libbed because we've given enough we've been speeches. Thinking we about can this for fall years. Into one of these patterns. Absolutely. And boom, we nail it. And, and then, then we we're go gonna, have dinner. Where and, are we going? Uh, the Village Pub. <laughs> okay. Now here's the deal. Yes. So what we want to do here yeah. is we want we they they're giving us X amount of time. We have to run over. Oh, absolutely. At least ten minutes until they panic. Yeah. And then they start, you know, oh God, get them Make, off the stage. You want to see a lot of this. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of wrap it up, a lot of cut. Yeah. And somebody and then the, the the key is you know you've got them when the woman that's always gonna be the one doing it. It's always this, yeah. She's gonna be up on the stage yeah. inching toward us. And there'll be the Jaws theme. <laughs> doom, doom, well, doom, be ideal, then they'll cut our microphone. It'll be just like the Oscars. That would be cool. We do play us off. Play us play off. Play us off. We do Twitter every Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, right after the hot new This Week in YouTube show. <laughs> uh, we, we're trying something. We're trying. We'll see. We'll see. It's with Lamar Wilson. We're doing a kind of a YouTube. It's fun, I think, you know. Uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. That's 2200 UTC. Uh, or 2300 UTC at twit.tv. Congratulations to uh, our friends, uh, Bonnie, I'm sorry, Kate, Brett, 
Brett Rounceville. Brett Rounceville and Katie Robinson got married. Yeah, yeah. They're big fans. They're, they're big friends of uh, uh, NSFW show. So why am I doing this on Twit? Just they're, they're yeah, big really. friends of the whole network. And oh yeah, and they're, they're big friends of the whole network. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Amtrekker and uh, Katie Mo. Uh, where did they get married? Somewhere lovely and beautiful. Where? San, San Jose. Jose. They got married in San Jose. <laughs> Lovely San Jose. It is the garden spot of the Southern Peninsula. Yeah. Oh, yeah. San Jose, that's the place to go. Mm -mm -mm. It's a destination wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Not Sunnyvale. Now, Sunnyvale, I might mock. Well, maybe. Uh, but San Jose's no, San Jose got Jose some nice... Got a lot. It's going to have the 49ers shortly. That's right. Or they're that's in Santa right. Clara. I'm not sure. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. <laughs> I hope. What? <laughs> Anything? No. Tickets Another, at twit.tv. Uh, tickets at twit.tv if you'd like to join the rapidly dwindling crowd. <laughs> you need tickets? There's to five get in here? people left. You need tickets? No, we just like to. We want well, to know how many Give people are here so we can put out seats and get you, you a piece of pizza. You got enough people. You got like 100 seats and three people here. Come on. It's <laughs> plenty of room. What happened, by the way, when this show first started out? It was street, huge. It was packed, packed, and packed. always packed. And then, was, this afternoon it was packed. It wasn't even like you're not talking 19, you know, 95. You're talking this this afternoon. And then as we talk, there's seats. Well, we got to do this. It was a slow, slow. We got to get day. Oscar like the seat fillers that they have for the Academy right, they Awards. Kept rushing in. We need seat fillers. Yeah, they actually pay them. No, I can't do that. That, that would be that's too much. Thank you, <laughs> Burke is filling a Just seat. Takes a seat. Good man. <laughs> yeah. I'll join you next week for another fabulous episode. Now, ladies and gentlemen, another twit. Is in the can. This is in the